We all know why we're here So let me ask you a question then Why the big secret? Truth seekers were really the true leader uh-huh. Keep it grooving the movement like two seaters Turn it up, we're knocking through both speakers It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers say Truth seekers were really the true leaders Keep it grooving the movement like two seaters Turn it up, we knocking through both speakers It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers say Break it down, now can you peep it? They're deceiving all the people, let me ask you what's the secret? What's the secret? Misinformation and lies are devious disguise yeah. They want the EMF blast until our brains is fried Oh, point their beams in the sky, oh it's a movie it's now UFO. This world is all CGI, their plot is truly foul But we're here to rise up and bring the real yeah. Time is now, yeah. true seekers, y'all know how I feel let's go, let's go. True seekers, we're really the true yeah, yeah. Keep it grooving the movement like two seaters. Turn it up, we're knocking through both speakers. It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers. Hey. Truth seekers, we're really the true leaders. Keep it grooving the movement like two seaters. Turn it up, we're knocking through both speakers. It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers. Hey. Why the big secret? Tuesday night, and we're here on Forbidden Knowledge TV. I'm Roderick Martin, and I'm the host of the Wada Big Secret YouTube channel and podcast, I should say. And tonight, we got a good one for you. And I just want to tell you that you could have been any other place tonight, but you chose to be right here, right now. And with that being said, we're going to serve you. Now, I want to bid you good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the 24 time zones that this show airs. And we got a big one for you tonight. The backstory, I'm located in the Jumbo State. This is where those UFOs come out to play. It's a Texas thing, y'all. And everything in Texas run big. And we got a big promise and be the boldest, baffling, belligerent YouTube channel in the world, creating captivating conversations that'll certainly cause controversy. Today, we got a good one for you. I got my boy, Doc Top Be Serious. And we're going to talk about those parasites, but not in the normal fashion that you would think. We're going to tie it into some paranormal. Maybe they're taking over or they could take over our body. There's a lot of things that they can do. But we are going to do it. All right. <clears throat> As you know, what we talk about is not PG. So let's put the children to bed. And if you have not fixed dinner, I got a little Texas recipe for you. We're talking about some butter, some biscuits, a little bacon, add a little syrup with it, and it'll be done quick. Everybody will be satisfied. But in the meantime, let's get ready. Uh, I'm excited. It's been a great weekend. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope your stomach is going to hold some of the conversation. But there's going to be a little twist tonight. Yes, a huge twist to the story. So you want to make sure you stick around to the entire show because it's going to be good. Uh, And and let me do that right now. So I'm going to bring my guy, Doc Todd B. Serious, into the conversation. What's going on, my man? Good evening. Good Good to hear you. Good to see you. I know. Good evening. You got that. You got that Barry White voice working. Good evening. You know, I got that new microphone. You know. Oh, sure. you got the SM7B rolling over there. Gotta, gotta have, have the best. best. 
Yep, there you go. Uh, we talked about that spectrum today, being at the higher energy, the highest of it, and, and accumulating it all. So we, we talked about it, and I think that's pretty good. Um, and I forgot to talk about it. Make sure y'all eat your veggies, too. Um, that's a little inside joke some of these people will get later. <laughs> all right, so real quickly, I know you don't really need an introduction because a lot of people know who you are, but we're going to talk about uh, a little bit. But as you guys would know, this gentleman right here is a member of the 4BK, or what I should say, Forbidden Knowledge family, okay? Uh, he's one of the leading minds when it comes down to body and spirit, and I will say the medicine man when we get down to it. Certified doctor of metaphysics, master herbalist. Yep, yep, we, that's what we're going to get into a little bit when we talk about these parasites. He's also a wellness educator and a vibrational healing <laughs> music pioneer yeah i know but we're gonna we're gonna get into some other stuff today though um and doc i i just thank you for being here and i think a lot of people is going to be really really surprised in this conversation we're going to have about these paranormal parasites what do you think yeah, yeah i think I that uh, uh this, particular this particular information, information is, is very, very interesting, interesting and you know we're gonna, we're gonna drop, drop into it on a deep level, level. <laughs> Maybe a little spooky level, too. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so w what I'm going to talk about right now real quick, let me open it up so everybody can understand. When we talk about these parasites, and if you really want to really think deep, some of these things have a face only a mother could love. Okay, check this out. These are real live <laughs> parasites. And when you start thinking about how some of these things look, and it makes you wonder what type of these, are they some type of entity, some species or whatever, because they do do a lot of things. They can come in, take over your body. They can at some point have you thinking certain ways as though they are the puppet masters. Uh, and as we know, when we tied into some of these things with our extraterrestrial beings and all this stuff. So we're gonna put a whole package together for you today that I think is gonna maybe a little far-fetched over here. But boy, when we bring it home, and it's going to be uh, talking about a little bit. And, Doctor, I don't know a lot of people know, but there was a major experience that you had that really brought all this into fruition. We're going to talk about it later on in the show, but I know a lot of people are going to be really shocked of where we're going to come from with this story. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, it blows my mind, you know what I'm saying, when I look back. And I realize, I realize what has happened, happened here. It's a beautiful, beautiful odyssey, odyssey. Very, very interesting, interesting. Deep, deep. You know, I yeah, got a little bit of an echo. echo. I want to do something, something real quick, quick. Okay? okay? All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Perfection, I got it. All right, well, in the meantime, while he's doing that, uh, let me set up some few things for everyone that is here. Um, as you saw in the topic or the title of the show, we're, we're talking about these the paranormal side of these entities when it get down to it. Doc B. Sears actually have some experiences from the ET side of things that we tie into these paranormal, these this parasitic type entities and all of that. So like I said, it's going to be a great one for you. And I think at this point you want to uh, truly uh, be around. Um, all right. So uh, let's go. Let's test your volume. One, one, two, two, one, two. one, two. All right. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine, loud and clear over here. I don't hear an echo. What about you? I still, I still got, got a bit of a, of a delay. delay. All right. You got a delay. All right. Let's, see, let's see if I could tap into one of the settings here and see if we can do a little audio echo cam for you a little bit. Let me see. How's that? Go ahead and talk. One, two. One, two. Are you good? I disappeared now. You mean you disappeared? Tall? I can hear you. You can hear me? I can't hear me. You I don't need to hear me as long as you can hear me. Yeah, but can you hear me? I can hear you. Well, hell, that's, okay. Well, that's how I'm answering. See, the aliens and took over already. That, that it could be a parasite. It could be a darn parasite. So we, we got to make sure we understand that. All right. So we're going to jump right into this because I think, uh, you know, oftentimes I try to do a little uh, cold open and everything else, but we're going to get right into it. First of all, 
you had a experience when you were four years old or you were a little younger, right? Or how old were you? Um, I was probably about four, five, maybe six, somewhere between four and seven. I'm not sure exactly. Four or seven. Okay. So this particular, this is the first one we're going to be talking about, but the major one we're going to, oh my yes. God, I can't wait till we get to that area there. But this one, when you were young, what kind of effect did this have on you? And then we're going to, I'm going to bring the audience in slow into this parasite thing, but what kind of effect did that particular experience have on you? Well, it was intrigue and, you know, I didn't know what I was seeing and what I was feeling because it wasn't just a seeing, it was also a feeling. So, you know, it was very, you know, confusing for me at mm -hmm. first, but it, it it wasn't just confusing. It was also like I was extremely calm, but at the same time, it, it was like two things happening at one time. I'm worried because I'm seeing something I've never seen. I'm feeling something I never saw. But at the same time, I was really calm and relaxed and maybe more calm and relaxed than I'd ever been. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, I get that a lot from a lot of people, especially when we think about the paranormal and think about some of these things. Because really the, the whole definition is just dealing with something that our, our minds, we're just not prepared to deal with. And I always tell people your eyes are useless when your mind is blind. So, and what I mean by that, I don't care what you see. If your mind is not open or blind to it, you ain't going to understand it anyway. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, and so, especially with us being young and, and stuff like that, I think it's one of those deals that we just need to really, uh, and I, and as far as young folks, I tell people now, this thing is real out here, but I'm, I'm going to set this over to the side for a minute. Let's get into this parasite. We're going to come back to that story. And then I'm going to pick up from over here off the shelf the big <laughs> the big enchilada that I take people are going to be like blown away of how all this happened. And and, and it's just as mystical as it can be. And anyway, I, I just can't wait to get to it. I uh, just hope everybody stick around for it because if they just leave, they're going to miss the big part. So let's get down into uh, how did you become interested, first of all, outside of that experience we'll talk about later, into – uh, studying parasites, period. Well, you know, I started out in the music industry and I was a, you know, percussionist at first. Then I became a record producer, an engineer, mastering engineer. Uh, I used to run record companies. I've got lots of awards and all of these things. And I got sick because I realized at some point that I was being controlled. You know, when we talk sometimes about entities, there are entities that control the show business. There's mm. beings that control it that are from somewhere else or the people that are controlling it or running it are being deemed a message from somewhere else to Ooh. use people. And I was into a vibrational state where I wasn't happy anymore. I had the money. I had the cars. I had everything. I was very wealthy. But, you know, it was like I, the buttons were being pushed. You know, and it's, you know, they start telling you exactly what kind of song to make, what frequencies to put in it. They start telling you what kind of lyrics to put in there, what tones to put in the song that create a vibration where people are almost subservient. They create, you know, see, there's tones and frequencies that actually are basically like parasites. They control your mindset. In fact, most of the music that you listen to is tuned to these frequencies that actually take away your free will. You see, I began to see how the industry ran from the inside. And I wasn't happy anymore because I was in the music at first because I loved it. That was my spirituality. That was my growth. That's what took me through the roughest years of my life. But now I'm in this industry and I'm like in a prison and I'm being told, right, what exactly to do. And it wasn't about creativity anymore. It wasn't about art. It was all about power and control. It was about, you know, a population control. It was about mind control because there are frequencies in music that actually control your mind. And a lot of us, you know, we agree now that this is normal, what we're listening to, but actually a lot of it is not natural. So there's tones, frequencies, sounds, and rhythms that put you in a trance state that take your natural free will. But it's interesting that what we now think of as free will is actually us modeling. It's actually us being controlled. We're actually going through a type of cognitive dissonance because one side of your brain is saying what something's not right. And the other one's saying that everybody else says it's right. So you become a part of the mob. You become a part of the crew. You become a part of the gang. You become one of the sheep that's on the farm. So uh, right around the late 80s, I realized how much control there was on the industry. And I became sick. 
I became physically sick, mentally sick, sick. I was done. And I, I had gotten to this place where I realized that, you know, my life wasn't mine. And I was unhappy. I was leading the sheep to slaughter because at that time I could go anywhere and get artists. You know, I could bring them to the man. You see what I'm saying? And they would sign these contracts. And every time you sign a contract and it says in perpetuity, then, you know, that means forever. You're signing your life away forever. They own your likeness. They own this. They own that. You can't do this. You can't. You know, you're not free anymore. And you've basically done this for the money. I didn't like it anymore. I was very unhappy, even though I had the wealth. I was very wealthy, you know. And um, I, I, I'd been, you know, I, I couldn't sleep at night and I'd, I'd, I'd wake up. I couldn't breathe. Uh, I would hear sounds. I would feel things on my hands. I couldn't feel my my hands became numb. Um, I couldn't digest food. My heartbeat was off. My blood pressure was super high. And uh, I knew something was wrong because I had gained a lot of weight. I'd gained probably like 80 pounds in a very short period of time. And I couldn't see good. I couldn't get up a, a flight of steps. I would stop breathing. The, the, it was bad. So I go to the doctor. He says, oh, my God, your numbers are off the chart. I don't know what's going on. He sent me to a specialist who sent me to a specialist who sent me to a specialist. After a whole lot of needles and prodding, they came back and said, you know, basically you have an autoimmune system illness that's worse than cancer. If you had cancer, we could give you five years. So you need to go get your affairs in order. And, you know, there's nothing we could do. And I asked the doctor, what do you do for a living? He said, I practice medicine. I said, practice? Well, give me another description. I don't like you practicing on me. And he said, well, you know, we're into disease maintenance. You maintain disease? I need one more description. I asked him one more time. And he says, well, we treat disease. We treat illness. You treat the illness, not me? What have y'all cured? And basically they said, we don't cure. We just treat. I walked away from the music, music industry. I walked away from the doctors. I figured I'm going to die. So I gave up everything and ended up searching for natural health. I studied everything about plants, medicines, herbs, essential oils, flower essences. I studied with teachers and metaphysicians from all over. I read all the holy books for all the secret formulas in the holy books. Because a lot of secrets are in the books if you know how to read them correctly. And I just studied. That's all I did was immerse myself in this new thing. And my phone was ringing now. Everybody's calling me for, you know, to do music, it's throwing crazy money at me, millions. But I actually had to take my phone at some point and I threw it into the, you know, in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> and uh, I, yeah. I, 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 did, I had to walk from everything. And that's, you know, when you really take the hero's journey, that's when you're ready to walk away from what is actually causing your death. I was dying and helping other people die. So, you know, that entertainment business was a type of entrapment. It was a prison and it was being controlled by beings or people or things that were basically using this vibration of music to control the minds of people and make people basically brain dead. You know, when you say that, the only thing I can think of is Suge Knight being a parasite or a lawyer, but we're going to get it to the supernatural side of this, because I, I don't know if a lot of people were hearing exactly what you were saying, although you're tying it into music and you're tying it into your career. But we're talking about puppet masters here. We're talking about entities that have the power to control the human body, the mind, the functions. Uh, and we're talking about parasites. And, and a lot of times I don't think a lot of people see that uh, some of these parasites, once they enter into the body, uh, whether we can, you know, put it toward the paranormal, because there's a lot of things that happen. There's, I mean, we're going to get into a lot of that tonight. But what I want to set the foundation first, and, and I'm going to pull back off the shelf here, your experience when you were four years old. Share with us what happened, because it's going to map into where we're going. And so I just want the audience to kind of get to know a little about all these experiences and your journey. Well, I lived in a place where uh, there's a lot of experimental things. Like I, I live very close miles from what they call command aircraft. And they were always doing these experimental projects. You could hear sounds. The ground would vibrate. The sky would turn blue in the middle of the night. A lot of things were happening. And I also was not did. I grew up not too far from the Groton uh, um, uh, submarine factory where they built the atomic subs. 
So there was a lot of stuff happening in the area where I was. So when things would happen, people would just play it off as, oh, well, you know, they're experimenting. They're working on something. But I walked out of the house one night and I saw this thing in the sky that looked like it was a moon, but it was much smaller than the moon. It was like if you took a dime and held it up in the sky, it was about that size. And it was like a grayish, it, it glowed a little bit, but it was a dim glow. I walked outside and looked at it, and something just struck me. That's not the moon. It's bigger than a star. And I just began to watch it, and it would move. It would move quickly, then it would move slowly, and I figured, oh, this is my eyes. You know, what, what the mm. heck is this, this? And I remember this feeling that came over me, and one side of me was like, oh, my God, this is, what the heck could this be? I've never seen anything like this. And the other side was, it's okay. You need to see this. Then I began to hear a sound. A frequency. Actually, I would say not a frequency. It was about seven frequencies all at one time making this tone. And this was like this. I couldn't. It was almost like I couldn't break my connection to this to this sound, this frequency. So I just watched it and then boom, it just disappeared. And I remember I didn't want to tell anybody because by that time in my life, everybody always knew it was something up with me because I always was seeing things. I was hearing things. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Cause I would see things move through the room at night. You know, every night I, I, I would see things. I would actually see shadowy beings in my home. But you know, my grandmother once told me, don't say nothing, you know, get your Bible out, read the Bible, say this prayer. I'm seeing some things. I'm seeing things that, they're saying, they're saying, well, they're not there. It's your imagination. I'm seeing them and I can feel the energy of them, but I can't talk about it now because, you know, they're going to think I'm crazy. I'm always getting in trouble. So I had always had this connection with energy, with frequencies, with sound. You see, and that's what, you know, that's when I started banging on pots and pans in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? Because right, right, right. I could bang out the tones of these sounds I was hearing. I was hearing sounds from, from nature. I'd go out in the grass and I could hear the sound of grass. I could hear the sounds of trees, birds and all these things. And I, and I realized that all the animals in nature, like the crickets and all them, all them were singing a song, which is really interesting. Because if you go online right now to YouTube and you look up crickets tuned down. They took crickets and recorded them and tuned them down to the human heartbeat. And they sound like a choir. The crickets tuned down to the human heartbeat start singing. They're like human voices. The most amazing choir you ever heard. So the animals and the plants, they're singing. We're in an orchestra or an orchestra. This whole thing is musical. You see, and, you know, everything is, is tied to its opposite. So on one side, it's beautiful harmony. On the other side, it's chaos. Now, I didn't know this as a child, but I could hear the frequencies of everything. I could hear what people seemed like I could hear what they were thinking, what they were feeling. Even before they walked in the room, I, could, I was precogging all this stuff as a child. So basically, you know, this time, you know, this is a special child. He's got a problem. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Something's wrong yeah. with him. You know, in school, I'm staring out the window, looking at the butterflies and the bees, and I can hear them, and this, I can feel their vibration. And that's what interest, interested me, was all that kind of stuff. So when I see this thing in the sky, I'm like, this is something else that I need to study. But that's not the deepest part. Many years later, I was uh, in band rehearsal. And a mm -hmm. friend of mine stayed later because we were working on this project. And we stayed really late to about maybe three in the morning. And we walk out. I walk out of his house. And his name was Beanie. I said, Beanie, man, look at this thing in the sky. He comes out. He says, oh, man, it's a UFO, man. It's a UFO. I said, wow. And then another one popped up. Right. And it just blinked right into the sky. Whoa. And he says, he says, man, they, they want us to follow him. I says, follow him. Now, I was I was like, maybe I was I didn't have a car. He had a car. So we jumped in the car and we began to drive. Do you know that these objects would wait for us? We would stay if like we had to stop for a light or whatever. You could see them in the sky. They would stop and wait. Then they would turn to the right and we would take a right or a left. We followed these things for hours. Now, interesting thing. I go to my mother and father's house 
And I go get my father because he don't believe in none of this. He don't want to hear none of this. This is crazy. Just study school. Get your math together. You know, you you know, you can't be out here and be crazy. But I've been telling him about things that I saw and felt. And he was just he would get upset. So I went and got him out of bed. I said, Dad, you got to come see this. You got to come see this. And he comes out in the porch. I said, well, look at that. He looks up in the sky and says, yeah. He says, what's the big deal? I said, you see those things? He says, yeah. He says, those are experimental crafts. I said, what do you mean, experimental crafts? He said, well, you know, we're right near, you know, the air, the, the base where they make all this stuff. They, there's some experimental vehicles they're working on. That's no big thing. I'm like, uh, those things are moving in a way that I've never seen any airplane. He says, that's why they're experimental. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I tell you what, I think that um, it, it, and, and, and as a host of what I'm doing, so I'm going to take that little piece and we're going to put it back on the shelf over here. We'll get it back down in a minute. And I'm going to tie back into some parasites because we're going somewhere, folks. We're really going somewhere with this conversation. And like I said, when we get to the big one, the big now you already see as a young child, he's already getting these experiences. He's already getting uh, just, I don't know, just the whole future is starting to unfold. But now all of a sudden, oh, that's my little timer here saying in a few minutes, I'm going to share something big with you guys. And it's all about consciousness and awards. So stick around for that in a few minutes. But where I'm going with this is, Doc, Doctor, is when we talk about extraterrestrial beings, when you talked about this experience and you're already a young kid, uh, you, you couldn't really talk about it. Uh, you know, you didn't want people to think you're crazy. Uh, and then at the same time, you know, people thinking extraterrestrials or life-size type people, so to speak. We're going to tie this into parasites could be extraterrestrials. Parasites could be supernatural. We're, we're, we, we know that, you know, these things, you know, are living organisms. And like I showed early into the show, and I'll show again, some of these things got actual faces, uh, when it comes down to this. And so my question for you, you all right? You good? I'm good. You go. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Okay. All right. So um, I just want to make sure because I will put on my Superman cape and jump over there and help whatever, you know, you need some help with because that's what we do. All right. So let's let's get back now into uh, the impact. You, you, you shared a little bit on lives and humans. And when we talk about these other organisms, uh, for starters, what is the worst parasite that you have discovered? Well, first of all, can you hear me? I can hear you, but you, you don't hear me. Hear yourself. Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me? Yeah, but you already bowed out. You don't need to hear you, but I can hear you. Yeah, that's weird. I don't see me on my mixing board anymore. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Um, you want some sign language? Like yeah, Sign me? language. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, to do the sign language. No, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I um. You. I don't see see this thing about worse, good and bad. It's interesting because everything is tied to its opposite. Okay. So parasites, let's break down what a parasite is. Parasite is a, a being that uses another being, a life mm -hmm. force that uses another life force as a host. It doesn't give any energy to its host. It takes energy. So let's say you got a friend or a neighbor or a cousin that comes over and decides that they're going to live on your couch for a while. Right. And they've been on the couch for months and they just eat and they, they, they live and they watch television, use up electricity, heat and whatever. And they don't give you anything. That's a parasite. So mm. in the animal kingdom, you have these parasites. Some of them are worms. They're bugs. They're, some of them are microscopic. And then you have some that are 33 feet long. Ooh. That's in humans. In fact, in elephants, you have the fire worm, which is about 150 feet long. So it's the full length of the digestive tract, right? And their job in nature is very important. They eat trash. They eat up garbage. They eat, they eat things that need to be digested and broken down and taken back to the soil. They, they create balance. Mm. They're not necessarily bad things. They're here to create balance. So when your system gets a little too far out, parasites come on to eat some of the, some of the issues <laughs> that's in your tissues that's causing <laughs> disease. Okay. You 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 feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So um I don't want to get into that that they're bad or good. There's a balance. There's a there's a and I, I'm gonna show you how in just a few minutes. Well, I want to so, show you some ugly parasites. You so, tell me if that's bad of, or good. 
some of them look, they may look bad, but they have a specific job in nature. Okay. These parasites, that's a that's a, actually a hookworm, right? I mean a, a tape, a type of a tapeworm. Yeah, but look at the tentacles on that thing. Imagine you try to not tentacles, out. those are claws. Well, that's what it uses. It hooks into the bottom of your stomach. Those hooks, bear. those hooks hook into the bottom of your stomach, right? And the opening of your stomach goes into their mouth, and they eat everything that you would eat. And when they excrete, that's what you eat. That's a tapeworm. Oh, One of the me. most common worms in oh. the world is a tapeworm. Man, that's a bad that one. tapeworm will grow the length of your digestive tract, 33 feet. How do we so get them out of there, though? Can we just on, pull them man. out? Just, just relax. Now, you just can't pull them out because they'll kill you. <laughs> you know, they're here for a reason. So some people who eat and eat and they never get full, they might have a tapeworm because the tapeworm is eating all their food. Some yeah, people... Some people who are very thin and they can't gain weight, it could be a tapeworm, you see, that is digesting and taking all of their energy. But then there's hookworms. Hookworms hook into the wall of the intestine and drink blood. Hookworms are the original Dracula. A hookworm could drink a cc or two of blood. And they just, they, that, that's what they do. They drink blood. But it's still inside you. So yeah, if you set it out, you get your blood back, right? No. <sighs> Most people can't get it out because, see, the average person in America is anemic because they don't have enough iron. Mm. And these things are eating the little bit of iron you do have. You need iron in your blood to carry oxygen and minerals and nutrition to your cells. So the average person in North America is not getting enough iron. They don't have strong enough blood to actually live a full life. Without iron, you don't have courage. Yeah. You're not powerful. You know what I'm saying? You're you're tired. You might think that, you know, I got good energy. No, you wouldn't have the energy you'd have if you had iron in your body. So iron is very important, but the hookworm will drink iron. You got whipworms. Whipworms, they have a tail that's like a razor, and they whip the wall of your intestine, and when it, when it bleeds and it gets, you know, when it begins to deteriorate, they eat that. You've got pinworms. They live in the anus. A lot of people think that they have, you know, uh, 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 you know, they have, what are they, hemorrhoids. Or they have itchy anus. This is pinworms. And you can see them in, in children and babies because sometimes when the mother's changing the diaper, you see these little out. white things moving around. Those are pinworms. But you don't think, out. you figure just the children have them. No, adults have them too. And I'm going to tell you a good way you can find out if you have pinworms. You got to do this with someone that really loves you and you really love them. Get a good <laughs> contract. Good and what you do is you get a good flashlight. Make sure you get an ever ready flashlight. Don't get the cheap batteries that just say batteries. You got to get a good, strong Duracell ever ready. This ain't a commercial for them, but it is. <laughs> Do not buy the one that just says batteries. You, you put those batteries in that flashlight, right? <laughs> and you tell the person that you love to go to bed on their stomach. Mm. When they get into a REM sleep, when their eyes begin to move, rapid eye movement, you gently grab their butt cheeks. Spread them open if you can. <laughs> Spread them open. Shine the flashlight on their anus, and you'll see these little buggers. They look at you and they they stun and they go back in really quickly. They're really fast. <laughs> they look like little tiny grains of rice. They're called pinworms, and they're these are pop. What the parasites I'm talking about now are popular, bro. This is not some just in third world countries. I'm talking about this is a third world country because everybody from the third world countries is here, <laughs> right? Wow. So. We have it. And a lot of parasites are what they call zoonotic, which means they pass from animals into humans. You see, so uh, 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 they're, they're syphilis, the, some of these diseases like syphilis mm -hmm. come from animals. You see what I'm saying? They're crossing from animals to humans. In fact, when the when the first people came here from Europe, they were on those boats with animals, chickens, pigs, cows, horses, goats. They slept with them in the hull of the boat. There was nowhere else to be. This wow. wasn't no luxury cruise liner. This was a serious ship, a boat full of entities. And the, 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 these bugs passed, which normally would live in the animal. They passed from the animals into the humans. Now, is that because we're eating the meat? And answer that in just a few minutes. Uh, I got to do... Uh, and share everybody with what we call history in the making real quick. Uh, and for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the Forbidden Knowledge Conscious Awards, and like I said, this is 
by far is going to be one of the biggest things, especially in the community of consciousness, never been done before. Uh, and when I tell you, when, when Billy decided this is something, him and Elizabeth, they're going to put this event together. Uh, now this thing has gotten so big. Uh, it's actually the place is going to be bigger than the Grammys itself. But I really want to just kind of express real quick, and I'm going to show you guys a real quick uh, two minute commercial about it. That you, it's not even commercial. It's a a call to action. It's something that you should be doing. You should come, uh, and it's the first one of its kind, and to be part of this history. But anyway, what I'm saying is this: uh, we we have all these different award seminars and you got the Oscars, you get all this. But when it gets down to people that are really changing people's lives, not in an entertainment field, but we're talking about right here, right now, like you hearing people, Dr. B uh, talking, Dr. B talking, and you hear all some of the knowledge that comes on Forbid Knowledge TV. All of this stuff is coming now to a point where people are now going to get their flowers right now. Uh, and I think it's one of the biggest things that ever going to be done. But let me share with you what you're not going to miss and where each and every one of you should take part of. And I'm excited as well because I'm going. I'm going. So check this out. Hey, everybody. It's Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I want to talk to you about a very special event coming up July 30th, 2023. The Forbidden Conscious Awards, the first annual event of its type. We're going to honor people who have been contributing to the conscious community for decades. People that you know and love that have helped you get to higher levels of thought and consciousness and awareness. And guess what? It's time to give them their flowers while they're still alive. It's going to be a live in-person event, but seats are going to sell out very fast. You want to make sure you're there in person for this amazing level event. It's going to be above the Oscars, above the Grammys. And guess what? You can help vote for the winners. Voting is available on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And the categories are going to be social media influencer, podcast slash radio host, TV host, actor, director, producer, entrepreneurs, health and wellness, philanthropists, authors, field researchers, archaeologists, space anomaly hunters, and of course, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And you want to be there in person because I'm going to be speaking. That's right. I'll be your key note speaker that night at the Forbidden Conscious Awards. If you want to come to a mini conference, this is the place to be because I'm going to give you the knowledge that night as well as performances. We have celebrity guests performing. We'll have a halftime show where we're actually going to perform music for you. And don't forget about the pre-event mixer where if you buy a box seat, you'll be in the VIP section and you also have private access to a VIP mixer with celebrity guests. Shake hands, break bread, network, and then walk the red carpet with us and take amazing photos. It's going to be a night to remember. You don't want to forget this. And you help vote by going to ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Go to the Conscious Awards link. You can text in a vote for who you want for any category, as well as if you're out of the country, you can use the web form ballot to still vote for anyone you think is worthy of being honored that night. Make sure you hurry up and get your tickets because they're selling out very fast. I want to see you there. Forbidden Conscious Awards 2023. Whoa, man, I'm telling you, that's going to be hot. Uh, I don't know if everybody noticed, but did y'all see when they showed the red carpet event with Melissa, Jimmy, and Billy? I was actually in there, and especially in the room, but way over in a little bitty corner, you probably would have seen my little fingertip. I was like, yeah, you know, but anyway, I'm in it. Uh, Doc, this is going to be huge. Uh, what do you think about Billy putting this on before we get back on with the show here? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I think it's amazing what, you know, what they're doing. I mean, you know, there is, you know, you have all these award award ceremonies out there. Most of them are kind of like a little bit plastic. You know what I'm saying? They were mm -hmm. made up and they decide and you think that you voted for somebody. A lot of times there's a group of people voting behind the scenes that are voting for what they want you to focus on. And sometimes what they want you to focus on is not the thing that you need to focus on to really expand your life. There's a lot of artists and a lot of people who do the work who are not being noticed. So having something like this is a beautiful thing so that the folks who are actually doing the real work, boots on the ground, get noticed instead of trying to go through the whole Hollywood, you know, magic trick, you know, because this Hollywood is a place of magic tricks. Okay. Holy wood is a deep thing. Man, you always have a way with words. Uh, let me just say it like this. I've actually been nominated for a podcast radio host awards, and I want to keep the flow. So here's the deal, everyone. 
right there. Go to vote for Roderick.com and it's going to take you to the Forbid Knowledge Awards voting page right there. That's all you have to do. Put my name, Roderick Martin, in the slot. Put your name and do it. All I'm saying, vote for Roderick.com. It's real simple. Go there, get your vote. Hopefully, I can just get one of you votes, just one, for just having this great guy right here with us. Oh, he's over there. I'm sorry. But either way, uh, vote for Roderick.com. <laughs> I have to put my own, my own thing in there, okay? Uh, all right, so let's get back down to this. And here's something, uh, and, and I'm just going to just do – just giving them a little, te- I'm going to give them a teaser, not you, but we're going to give them a little teaser a uh, real quick. And I'm going to show this image. Ladies and gentlemen, this is called the Bermuda Triangle. There's a lot of high strangeness have happened in the Bermuda Triangle. This is not me advertising my next show. This is also not me saying, okay, we're going to talk about it down the road. But there is something strange about that that has to do with this man right here. And we're going to talk about it later on in the show. It's, 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 it actually is how all of this came about. Doc, I can't wait to share it. We're going to do it in a little bit, but let's get back on. I just want them to know so that they do not go to bed on us. They do not get off of this. In fact, go ahead and, and share and get some more people in here because that particular part, and it's all part of this parasite journey. Yeah, high strangeness, Bermuda Triangle, parasites, supernatural. Hell, we on that shit today. I'm sorry. Oops, sugar, honey, iced tea. We can bleep that out later. Okay, we'll we'll get it. All right, so let's get back down to something I think uh, is it's it's pretty uh, out there a little bit. Uh, you you refer to parasites as entities. Now we're going to get into another form of conversation here when we talk about these things because obviously entities at some point are seen to be a lie. Uh, they have an agenda. They, they have a way of things. Why don't we put a lot of emphasis on these parasites in the everyday life, which some of these are true entities that are taking and possessing over people. What are your thoughts about that? Well, you know, for many years, you know, the scientists didn't want to really look at how these things could be controlling the world parasites control the basic life for humans mm-hmm. religions politics everything in fact there's a new section of science if you look it up it's called parapsychology mm. yep okay now so there's parapsychology then there is psycho parapsychology look that one up psycho parapsychology That's the study of how these little creatures can control the minds, the activities, and the habits of beings all over the planet. So you have like a parasite will get into, let's say, a zebra, Mm -hmm. right? And the zebras know that they got to move fast when they go through the river because the crocodiles are coming. But you got one zebra that's moving slow. He's walking slow and he stops and he drinks a little water in the middle of the river. The other, the other zebras are looking back. Hey, hey, Jim, Jim, what the hell? Get out of the water. Crockles are coming. You know what I'm saying? You might he stands, he yeah, stands yeah. there, but he has the parasite. And the parasite is attempting to move from the zebra into the crocodile or the, the alligator, whichever one that eats the, the animals, right? It is looking to move from one being to another. So it controls the mind of that animal. So it can be it can be transported, you see, from one place to another. Then it gets in the crocodile, then it, the crocodile poops it out. Now it's in the fish. The fish eats it and it just keeps, it has this whole life cycle, you see. So these parasites, what they're doing is they're using their host to travel, you see. There are parasites that control the mind of human beings. There's a parasite that everyone should look into. It's called toxoplasma. Toxoplasma is the mind control parasite. They say 6,000 years ago. No, you know, I'm not even going to talk about We're going to talk about that after we talk about the triangle. I ain't going there. All right. Then. Then. Make sure you bring me back. I'm going to bring Toxoplasma. We're on the shelf. We're going to pull it off. Pull it up, pull it up. Toxoplasma is a parasite that controls the mind of its host. It controls the mind of its host. Now, what does it do? It causes you to be confused about what is your goal in life. It plays with the part of your brain called the amygdala, 
which deals with your perception of fear, your protection of love, your perception of love. Your it just plays with your perceptions, so that you end up never making your you never get to peak performance. You never get to peak performance because you're controlled. You're controlled by the parasite because the parasite wants to live, right? And it needs to keep you dumbed down. So they're now saying that this particular parasite may be the reason why we have so much war, so much hatred, so much division. And we'll, I'm going to leave it right there. We're going to put a pin in that and come we'll back to, 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 to right. a little later. But basically, you know, I was telling you earlier that I, be, you know, I got into herbs and I got mm -hmm. into natural medicine to save my, my life. A year after they said that I didn't, you know, I had less than a year to live, I was back. My body changed, my hair changed, my skin changed. I could sleep at night. I was a brand new person. So then my new study was to look at herbs, look at plants, look at minerals, look at vitamins, look at nutrition. That's all I studied. I was driven. I was focusing only on that. And, you know, when you focus on something, you make that thing bigger. If you mm -hmm. focus on what you can control, it gets bigger. And I realized that I could control my life now. I could take my life back by being aware of what was causing me, you know, to be ill and what was making me healthy. You see, once you understand, you know, that, you know, that over there, that's this landmines over there. If you go over there, you're going to get blown up. But if you stay on the road, this is like if you're skiing, right? If you're skiing and you say, oh, man, I got to, you know, let's say you're skiing through the woods and you say, oh, my God, I don't want to hit a tree. I don't want to hit a tree. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to hit a tree. But if you tree. say, stay on the path, I got to stay on the path. Guess what? You stay on the path. So I stayed out of the trees. I stayed on the path of natural health. And I, after a while, had, you know, discovered some things that other people had known. I started looking at plants a little differently because remember earlier I told you I can hear plants. Mm -hmm. I can hear the sounds of nature. So I studied frequencies and sounds that different plants make because everything is made of light. Everything is made of frequency. Everything is making songs. Everything is making sound and vibration. And we're living in an orchestra. It's an orchestra of sound. If you can only hear it. But the, our spectrum of hearing, seeing, and feeling is very small compared to what's happening out there. There's a lot happening that you can't see because your perception is too small. So my perception got wide and I studied nothing but health. And at a certain point, something happened because I was an herbalist and I was known like in Los Angeles for many years until something changed everything. And we're going to get to that in a little bit. Not yet, though. Not yet, because it's big. But I got another question. I want to tie some stuff in so we can get a little eerie here. Can parasites have a paranormal or supernatural qualities? Yes, they definitely yeah. can. Because, see, parasites are not just physical things. Mm. It's parasites. Well, let's talk about just a, a one that everybody might be able to understand quickly. Ah, let's do it. The mental parasite. Mm. A parasite is something that uses a, a host for all of its stuff. It uses your energy. It uses everything to survive. It gets its resources from the host. It doesn't bring anything to the party. That's like the person that came to your party. They didn't bring beer. They didn't bring no tuna fish. They didn't bring no crackers. They didn't bring no greens. They don't bring nothing. They just come to eat and drink and leave. You see? Parasites bring nothing to the party. So now, a mental parasite is an idea or an experience that happened in the past that's using the present as a host. Mm. So your old ideas about the past. Now, how many people live in the past? Most people are living in the past. They're trying to fix a past that cannot be fixed. So if that, pa if that past idea is something disagreeable, guess what? You are ruminating and focused on something that you cannot fix. And now in the present moment, it eats you alive. So Buddha once said, the average person, what the average person is haunted by angry ghosts, hungry ghosts. The average person lives in a realm of hungry ghosts. The average person is living in the domain of ideas and things from the past that they cannot fix or control. So if something happened that was really disagreeable and every day this is your thought process, you keep going back to it. And that's what that's natural for a lot of folks to be stuck in the past. But when you're in the past, you can't live in the present. If you're in the past, you cannot live in the present. You can't, if you're, if you're too stuck in the future, what's going to happen, what should happen, you can't live in the present. When the future comes, they call it today. So you might as well live in this place called to now. So if you have ideas that are floating too far to the past, too far to the future, 
then guess what? You're being eaten alive by the idea and the vibration of something that you cannot change. You cannot control it. So once you get focused on to now, right, this particular moment, you take full control. So a mental parasite is an idea or an experience from the past or from another place that's eating your energy alive. You can't live in this particular moment because this particular moment cannot have the past and the present that are happening at the same time. You got to choose one. Now, there is a technique. There's ways that you can do this that we now know how to get a person to live in the, pre in the present. And this is when you get the subconscious mind and the conscious mind to be aligned. That's one of the things I do. Subconscious, subconscious alignment, where you get your, 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 your conscious mind and your subconscious to be in, in, in sync, in tandem, working towards a goal. The average person can't totally get towards their goal because they're stuck in the past and they think that the past or history repeats itself. You keep hearing it. History repeats itself. History repeats itself. You tell me one thing that has ever happened that repeated itself. There's not one thing. Tell me, Roderick, what happened in the past that has repeated itself? Name it. Uh, sunrise? No. The sun never rises in exactly the same place. The sun is being okay. changed out. Every seven years, you get a brand new sun. It is not the same sun. You know what? It's not You're the right. same right. moon. It is not the same earth. It's always changing. It's always growing and expanding. The tree is never the same tree. The leaves never grow in the same place. The soil is never the same. No two snowflakes are the same. No two raindrops are the same. No two sounds are the same. Nothing is the same. The only thing that stays the same is your perception and your mindset. Hmm. But that can change too, though, right? We everything everything is changing yeah constantly the only thing that might stay the same is your thought process mm. you may be caught in a loop you may right. be caught like in a loop like deja vu or something like that it's not even deja vu so some people having vuja day vuja day is when the stuff uh -huh. it uh -huh. never happened before <laughs> you see what i'm saying <laughs> you ever have vuja day you get to say oh my god i've never been here before that's vuja day deja vu is i've been here before but that's because we're all time travelers we're mm -hmm. all we're multi-dimensional beings you see but what i'm saying is is that your mind if you're stuck on the way of thinking and it's frozen and you keep thinking that something in the past repeats itself, you're living in hell because nothing mm. has ever repeated itself. Right, except right. Except your mindset. If something happened once before, like somebody said, well, what about World, World War I and World War II? That's why they named them different. They were different. The past is gone. You cannot fix it. The only thing you can do is bring the past in your own mindset and your own perception into the now. Now, there are some good things that happened in the past that maybe you need to, you know, kind of reminisce on them. Those are good things, you see. But what most people are focusing on is the disagreeable, what bad happened in their life. That because that holds the most energy, the most gravity. You see how bad it was growing up. And, you know, it's a funny thing, man, when, you know, if you sit down and talk to people about how bad your life was. Right. And when they're done, before they're even done, you start, you, you say, well, you should, that was really terrible. But guess right, what happened right, to me? Right. Guess what happened to me? And your story is just as bad as theirs based on your perception, based on how you feel about things, based on how you look at things. It's all perception. Once you can manage your perception, right, everything changes. It's all about management, you know, managing your perception. So my point here is when you can pull up things from the past, all the, your, your main story is about the traumatic past. Then you're living in it and you're, you've crystallized it. It is real because you believe it's real. It repeats itself in your own mindset. But nothing from the past repeats itself. Wow. That's that's interesting. Uh, you know, we got over 2000 people in here right now watching us live and. I'm still going to push the needle, OK, um, and my question is. How do parasites, entities, compare to paranormal entities such as ghosts and demons? Because I've seen that in the chat a little bit, people talking about demons. And what do you think about all that? Everything that has ever happened and ever will happen 
is happening right now. Okay. The minute you mention demons, your reticular activating system in your brain, it's a little thing about the size of your little finger, it causes you to focus on the disagreeable. If you focus on that, you expand it and make more. A lot of times, now just you got to think about something now. When you get down to the quantum field, when you get into quantum space, everything is everything. It's all the same. It's just, it's all possibility. Anything could happen. You see? Mm. What makes things come to form are your wavelengths, the waves, the thoughts, the wave casting you're doing from your mind into the quantum field. So the inf information is leaving your brain as waves. If you do it enough times because repetition of pleasure or pain is what programs the space around you, what programs this, this, you know, your vibration, your head, your thought, it programs the epigenetic environment around you to look more for the thing you're focusing on. So you focus on demons and guess what? Demons are everywhere. Mm. But the demon for the demon to exist, it has to have its opposite. Everything is tied to its opposite. So we were taught the language of struggle as children. We were taught about how bad things were. And look out for evil and the devil's going to come get you and blah, 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 blah. A lot of times the demon that you, you ready for this? I'm ready for this. The the, a lot of times the demon that you feel is doing something to you is you. Hmm. The demon within. The the number one enemy, the biggest challenge for you to conquer is your own self. So one time I used, I used to always have this dream, this reoccurring dream. And it was always this evil monster thing with all these teeth and had, you know, all these swords and knives. It was the ugly thing is drooling blood and all of this. Every night this thing would chase me. At one point I got tired of it and I said, tonight I'm going to deal with this. So up comes the demon. It's killing mm. me. It's going to kill me. It's going to eat me. Oh, my God. It's terrible. I decide not to run because I always ran from the demon. And I turned around and looked it in the eyes. And guess what? It was me. Mm. It was the ugly version of me. It was my own mindset. Now, a lot of folks don't want to hear this because, they, oh, no, that ain't true. I, I just If you could just listen to me for a second, because this is going to help a lot of people. We are creating our reality. Evil exists because we created evil. Now, you may look and say that was an evil act that they did. But then you do something and you don't call it evil. You killed the fly. Well, that's different. Not to the fly. If all the flies died on the planet, guess what? We wouldn't exist. If all the roaches, right, died on the planet, we wouldn't exist after seven years. So you think that they're evil when actually they got a job to do. You just don't like them because they look ugly. <laughs> right. I know some folks are like, man, you know, I like to, I, I, I like the disagreeable negative talk. Well, get off the, get off the air then because what I'm going to bring is something that you can actually control because now this is 2023. That's a seven vibration. That means you got to crystallize your vibration. You got to crystallize your mind because seven is a Christ number. I'm not talking about this Jesus the Christ. I'm talking about the Christ vibration in you, the chrysalis in you, the vibration that you could create anything. So if you would like to destroy the devil, the devil, right, you got to look in yourself because the true enemy starts in you. When you take control of yourself, what you're eating, how you're thinking, some of the things that you're eating are haunting you. You're eating some things that are eating you. Some of these things were never meant to be eaten. You got foods called frankenfoods. They never existed on this planet. You got nanoparticles and all these things in foods to make them taste good, flavor enhancers. You got all this stuff in your food. You're sitting there and it goes into your stomach and guess what? Most of your mind, most of your brain is in your gut. Your gut is your first brain. There is more brain, more neurons in your gut than there is in your head. It's the same tissue. 
But the friendly bacteria is upset because you're eating garbage, you're eating trash, you're frying them, you're killing them. So guess what? You, you, you know, you're having bad thoughts because you're eating food that's not good. You're eating rotten food, you're eating processed food, you're eating man-made food, you're eating plastic, you're eating crossbred animals that never existed. Chickens, pigs, and cows that never exist on this planet. The Chinese made chickens in 1507. Look it up. It's a crossbreed between a bird that's kind of like a turkey and a jungle fowl. <laughs> cows didn't exist. Cows are buffaloes and oxen crossed together. They never existed. You understand what I'm saying? Pigs right. are, are rat, cats, and dogs all crossed together. Now, you want to talk about some alien stuff. This was wild what we did. We crossed a lot of plants and animals together to make it easy for us. So now you're, something's haunting you. You're haunting yourself. We're the cancer on the planet. I'm not saying there are not things out there in the world that could hurt you. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there's some things that could help you too because everything has its opposite. When I faced the devil in me and I told the devil in me, if there's anything that you cannot do, will you leave me alone? Mm. And he said, oh, I can do anything. There's yeah. nothing I cannot do. Like, I'm sweating. It's a nightmare. I'm shaking. Oh my God. There's nothing you will not control. I am the devil. Almost like Freddy Krueger. You got the body. I got the brain. Yeah, go ahead. So I thought for a minute. I said, let me think. And I said, so if there's something you cannot do, you'll leave me alone. Yes, I'll leave you alone. There's nothing that I cannot do. <laughs> I said, be somewhere where the universal God is not. You can do it. What did you say? Be somewhere where the universal God that's the quantum field, is not. Why would you say something? You're hurting me. Oh, my God, I'm dying. You're killing me. It's just like when Dorothy threw the water on the witch, melted away. Mm -hmm. Because I use the opposite. See, energy in motion tends to stay in motion until acted upon by an equal or opposite force. Everything is tied to its opposite. Some of these entities that are controlling you, you first need to look at what you're eating. Are you eating things that never existed? Number one, look at what you're eating. Look at what you're drinking. Why do you think they call alcohol spirits? Huh? What are you watching on television? What kind of images are you taking in? A lot of people believe in struggle because you were taught the language of struggle as little children. They told you about these entities coming through the wall to get money from under your bed, under your pillow, because you left a tooth for them. Sound like the bone collector to me. There's some truth in some of this because there are things that can actually move through walls and everything. Yep. But guess what? Here's the truth. What I found on my journey, that most of the things that are in opposition to goodness are afraid of you if you're living in goodness. Mm. They're afraid of you because you didn't take command. I took command of the evil thing. I have seen some things that most people would blow their minds. And you would say, this is evil. This is evil. Not until you learn how to take control of yourself. You got to learn a certain way of breathing. You got to eat a certain way. You got to walk a certain way. You see what I'm saying? You got to use the opposite energy on everything. That's what you do with a with like a lever or a fulcrum. You got to learn balance. You got to learn homeostasis. So you're telling me that evil entities are, are, are attacking you. But meanwhile, you're up at the doctor's office and they about to give you a shot. You don't even know what the hell it is. No. You're about to eat some food that has mood enhancers in it. You're about to eat some food that's got GMOs. Or, you know, you and then you're, just, you're laying around having a genetically modified orgasm. It ain't even real because most of the people are sick. And they always expect something bad. So something bad does happen. Now, I'm not saying to go down in the ocean where there's sharks and all of a sudden you're laughing with the shark. You know what I'm saying? No, you got to be right. careful. You, there's some things that can hurt you, but you want to find a place where you're safe. You got to find a sweet spot. So what I told you earlier, when I saw the thing in the sky, one mm -hmm. side of it had me really scared. One side of my brain was frightened. The other side of my brain was everything's going to be okay. You see, I had both happening. We all have a choice. 
do, do, do you see what I'm saying? No, I, I mean, I totally get it. I, 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 when you and I did breakfast, we were sitting eating breakfast and, you know, I'm when it got this nice little plate, you sitting here getting this nice looking thing. And I come back with this, I don't know what it was, strawberries and cream or whatever. You looked at me like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, man, this stuff tastes good. Until you start talking about it like you do it now, I'm start pushing it away, pushing it away. I'm like, bye, 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 bye. Oh my God. I yeah. said, yeah, that's why he in the aliens because it's in his mind. <laughs> aliens is in that food. See, sometimes what you're calling an alien could be something submicroscopic. Do you know there are universes that could live on a speck of a speck of dust? Whole wow. universes as above, so below. It's just not these little beings that live in a that just land in a little silver ship with little outfits on. I got a joke for you, by the way. What well, we gotta hear it. Let's go. You, Many you, years ago. You ever, you ever wonder why, you know, aliens don't really land? They might be seen in the hood, but they don't land in the hood. Do you uh -huh. know why? No, go ahead. <laughs> because many years ago, five little aliens landed in the hood. And they decided to walk around in their silver little outfits and go check out the hood. And they left their ship. And they came back an hour later and the ship was gone. Mm. And they, they didn't know what happened. 20 minutes later, they hear music booming. <laughs> the brothers in the hood done stole the ship, put rims on it, and done turned that sucker out and is oh. driving it through the hoods. So guess what? <laughs> they put a message out through the universe. Do not land your spaceship <laughs> in the hood. They will jack you. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I got a joke. <laughs> I got a little joke, and I and I used to tell it, and, I, and and people always ask why, you know, why aliens don't abduct black people. And after all my research, I start thinking, and I start putting together with the history, because we are not going to get back on any more boats and not knowing where we're going. So we don't want no more ships to go nowhere. How about that? Come on, I, somebody got to laugh. I need some ha ha's in the. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, y'all got me. All right, so we're going to get to, in just a second, the Bermuda Triangle and the association of what it is. It's, it's going to come in just a few moments, folks, and we're, we're about there. Uh, but what I want to, in fact, actually, it takes me to real quick. I'm just going to show some people real quick, and I'm not going to get into the history of everything. But uh, I told you, you know, we're working on. Uh, what we call Project Black. Here's the official seal. We now have it finished, and it's the Black League of Alien Contact Knowledge. Uh, we're we're launching that. Uh, I've been talking about it for quite some time, and basically, really, the mission is to start the conversation about uh, not just extraterrestrials, things that we're talking about in the black community, and and it's for everybody. It is not a exclusion if you're not black. In fact, uh, me being a UFO investigator and all the work that I've done, uh, especially with uh, some of these TV shows that I've been in real quickly, just to you know, show you guys, um, I've been on Open Minds recently with Gina Meredith. Uh, of course, I, I'm in the documentary on Discovery Plus channel called Alien Endgames. And I you know, was featured in Billy Carson's uh, Black Knight Satellite and I actually have eight episode show on his network. Uh, on Fox Tubi, uh, of course, Gaia, Ancient Aliens recently. Uh, and one of the things I found out, uh, Doctor, is that we have a disproportionately uh, representation, number one, in, in, in the African-American and indigenous communities. You and I had this discussion, um, as well as, uh, you know, the stories that come out of it. So, Recently, again, we've, we've done, uh, we launched Project Black, and, and there's some history behind it and how the, the actually icon and seal came up, and I was going to talk about it tonight, but I'll skip that a little bit and, and do another show with it. But it is uh, really uh, inspired by a video that Billy did on his channel a while back, about nine months ago, The Hidden Black Kings and Queens of Egypt, Ancient Egypt. Uh, so you guys really want to check that out but it does have everything to do with the color schemes that we used, uh, the icons from the, the all seeing eye of Amon Ra uh, on down to uh, why that particular extraterrestrial uh, looks African-American <laughs> in some way. So 
it's Project Black. So you want more information than that, definitely subscribe to the Why the Big Secret YouTube channel uh, and you will be able to get a lot of more videos. We're going to be doing workshops, having people uh, share their experiences because in the community, it's taboo. And, and I get emails every day uh, about people that saying, hey, we, we wish we had a place to talk about it, especially in our community being taboo. Uh, and real quickly, uh, let's hit on that before we get it. Why, why is it a taboo subject of this extraterrestrial things in our community, though? Well, I think that, first of all, see, we got to go back to fear. Mm -hmm. The beings that I have encountered okay. were more afraid of me mm. because I was a higher expression of life than them. Okay. Courage and heart is huge. When you're afraid, right, you put out this energy like this. It's almost like a yellow auric field. And you're, 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 you're easily taken. It's just like if you're, you know, you're in the street and somebody's about to do something to you. You can run or you can stand there and look them in the eye. You see, we have been taught to be afraid of some technology that's ours. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. We have been afraid of a technology that's ours. Mm. There are different beings that come from all over. But we, right, are supreme in certain ways. The most powerful thing you have is your mindset. If you live in fear and you're taught to be in fear, you see something, you're afraid of it. And then you watch these shows where, oh boy, a light came and, oh, and they was pulled up in the ship and they did some experimental, you know, sexual experiments on them and all this kind of stuff. You keep hearing these stories always all over and over. And every time you see what the aliens look like, they look the same to you. <laughs> Somebody's pointing you in that direction to tell you Absolutely. that that's what it looks like. Yeah. Now, if they land and all of a sudden they look like George Clinton with huge afros and colorful locks and all of this it's a whole nother thing but what the truth is is that we are most likely the aliens on this planet you can tell the way we treat it you don't treat this place with respect look at what we do yeah what we do is re it's terrible we're the cancer on the earth i think that we came from somewhere else and all of us didn't come from the same place and i'm going to drop another piece on you and then i'm going to leave it alone the first beings that we know of through, you know, our studies on the planet were mushrooms. The mycelium network. If you look at mycelium really closely, you're going to say, wait a minute. These alien, these beings are omnipresent. They're everywhere. Nothing mm -hmm. grows without them. They travel through space. They don't need air. They don't need water. They can travel on a speck of dust. They can travel on an asteroid. Those were the first beings that came here, and we're more related to them than anything else. We share 65% of our DNA with mushrooms. Right. Mushrooms can take you on a trip. <laughs> mushrooms can take you up out of here. It's just a matter of your perspective of knowing what we're made of. See, I have a special uh, on my website, elevationtime.com, elevationtime.com. Okay. I have, uh, if you join the membership, I have a, a, a a four-part series. It's, I think it's like 16 hours of information about aliens. It's a mind-blower when you get it from my perspective because I only speak from experience. I don't speak about what could be. And I need things be, you know, philosophy is one thing. We can have, you know, philosophers all day long. But I like the place where philosophy and science meets up. I could tell you right now that in this room where I am right now, there are entities all around me. I see them. I feel them. Hmm. I see entities around you right now. Right now. But I mean, that doesn't see when you say entities, we hear bad, evil. Yeah, because we, we, we think an evil. Yeah. We've been watching these programs. We always watch these programs. They took the cows. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, they like beef because it's always cows. You know what I'm saying? Surgically cut, laying in the field. You know what I'm saying? But that is not all of life. There are beings that live right here. There's beings that live in your gut, which you would consider aliens. They're not the same things, like I said, in the silver ship that land and need lights. Some of these beings travel through dimensions. 
we are not even totally here. You see, this is like the television set that we have right now, right? Now, if the body turns off, like the television, you turn it off, is there still a signal coming? There's still a mm -hmm. signal out there. We live forever. We've been here forever. We are afraid of ourselves. So if you live in fear and you're always worried about evil and you're talking about the evil entities that's in you, we can get the evil entities out of you. You, you got to turn those entities into entities, but you got to take control. People say, well, you know, you might need to do an exorcism. Well, first you need to do is a little exercising. <laughs> See? And that means to cut, to cut something out. What I'm saying is that we're in the most beautiful place in the world and somebody on the planet doesn't want you to know it. Just like in the music industry, nobody wanted you to know the sacred frequencies that could change you and help you grow. That's why they moved from vinyl records, you know, being picked up by a diamond or a sapphire, which was based on some electromagnetic energy that was actually yeah. healing. And they went to what? They went to digital. Now they're down to MP3s. You want evil? You're talking about the evil entities? Do you have any idea what an MP3 is? What the frequency is doing to you? You're talking about why you're having bad dreams, bad luck, bad relationships? It's the music. Then you listen to the music. Most of the music today is a loop over and over and over the same beat. It don't change. And you bobbing right. your head talking about this dope. And we listen to music from the 70s and didn't do that. Because that music was healing. We're listening to something now. We're under a certain type of mind control. And there are beings that are controlling your mind, your thoughts, what you wear, how you act, the cologne you wear, the food you eat. It's being controlled. You just don't remember it. Only 1% of the people really know. The, or I should say 5% of the people really know the truth. Only 5% of the people are really going to vibrate in the place of courage or true love. The rest of us are going to be afraid of everything. All they got to do is tell you something bad. You hear something outside, you know, oh, my God, it could be the aliens. You know what I'm saying? You may be the aliens. You are not from here. You're a traveler. It, it, it is amazing that you say that. Uh, and you said a lot. Um, and one in particular, when you talked about just now, you know, we're not from here. A lot of people ask me all the time. They go, Roger, you a UFO investigator and all that. What do they look like? And I'll be like, shh. Whew. What if we look like them, right? And I'm going to show something. I, I just kind of put it up in here while you were talking, and then we'll get back. You know, we can take a detour. We have taken one. We'll get back in just a second. We're going to get into this Bermuda Triangle story in just about two or three minutes, everyone. But in the meantime, I'm going to put some on the screen. I want you to take a look at it. I'll read it out and see if this has anything to do with what you just said. Here is Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It says, God said, let's make man in our image according to our likenesses. And I say this because our is plural. And that is not one God, or is that multiple people, or could that be? So when we ask, what do they look like? What if we look like them? What do you think about that? Um. Boy, I see the pause. Oh, I hit somewhere. I didn't. Uh, my shovel landed. Go ahead. It's impossible for you to be right now on the air and only there. Mm. You're okay. everywhere. Got gotcha. you. You're all over the universe. The universe. When they studied quantum physics, they found a particle. Okay. When they moved it, they couldn't tell which way it moved, but that particle was in every lab all over the world, the same particle. The God particle this is what you're speaking of. When you looked at it as an observer, the particle opened up and became what you desired for it to become. Mm. So what we're saying is there's only oneness. Everything is a projection from the oneness. It's just different projections of different spectrums of light. We're light beings. We're travelers. We're not in these physical bodies. There is no death. There is no light. I mean, no death. There is no life and death. There just isness. But what happens is, is we get in the mind, we get in the business of minding other people's business. What are you talking <laughs> about, Dr. B? Because yeah. they keep telling you stuff and you keep believing it. And then you hear the news about how bad it is. And then you into all of these things about, you know, all of these uh, conspiracy theories. I'm telling you the biggest conspiracy the one, is the one between you and yourself, the between your, your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. Let me tell you about people. The average person says they want to get rich 
but poor still got them. Yeah. Average person want to say they want to get healthy, but illness still got them. The average person says they want to, you know, they want to be conscious, but ignorance still got them. It's all happening at the same time based on your focus. I am saying that right now there is a doorway that has opened in the universe in 2007 because we're in the photon band where there's a cloud of light, the photon belt or the photon band. There's a cloud of light of entities called biophotons that are living light entities. And our solar system goes through them every 13,000 years. When we go through them, we wake up from the deep sleep. We've been in a 6,000 year, 13,000 year sleep. So we've been afraid of our own shadow. We've been afraid, whatever they tell us, we're afraid of. You know, this whole thing about God and the devil. I mean, think about this for a minute. How could the devil be in control of anything? If God made the devil, why did God make the devil? This is why I asked the folks that believe in this. Yeah. Why do you make the devil? Because somebody needs to test you to see if you're going to be scared. And if you're scared all the time and you're worried all the time, then guess what? They got you. So now there's entities and ideas and things that are controlling you. You are now being eaten alive by a parasite. And a lot of times that parasite is the parasite called fear. Now, there's a healthy amount of fear. You don't just stick your hand in the fire and, you know, let it burn. You don't, you know, there's some things that you do that are going to keep you right in a place where you can be safe. But I'm saying that the average person doesn't understand that there's some entities. And I'm going to say this real clearly. There are some beings that are attempting to communicate with you. Yep. Some of the ships, you ready for this? I'm ready for it. Some of the ships don't have anybody on them. <laughs> some of the ships are macro beings. They're living beings. Almost you like see, parasite size, right? They're not parasites. Some of these beings like the whale, mm, just okay. like you have whales in the water. Well, mm -hmm. air is like water. Air is a liquid. There are beings that cloak themselves in cl vapor clouds. Huh? They what? cloak themselves in vapor clouds. And they're here to do what they do. They're not bad or good. Some of the beings that you think of coming down to take over, it ain't coming because look, your water is bad, your air is bad, y'all eating crazy foods. You've snapped. So why do we need to come communicate with you? You're not ready yet. You're not ready to get to that next level because we're yeah. crawling around like little animals. And we think that we're so intelligent. We know so much, you know. I was I used to deal with this guy years ago. He used to come to my lectures in Los Angeles, and he worked for JPL, Jet Propulsion Lab. He told me so many deep things about the beings that would blow your mind. He talked about the plasma beings. He talked about the energy beings, the light beings. And he said he, until that time, had never met a disagreeable being. Mm. He said they did exist, but they were not here at this particular time. Are, are you following what I'm saying? I'm following. I'm going to give you another piece. In Los Angeles, I had a landlord. This man, all I say is his last name was Sugarman. He invented the triggering mechanism for the atom bomb. He was a mathematician. They couldn't fire the thing and get away. So they hired this guy to figure out the mathematical equations to fire the bomb and get away. And to do it, he had to reverse time. They had to go back in time. This man, the final years of his life, he spent coming to my house, sitting on the porch, and downloading information about the beings that were there when they made the atom bomb to make sure that it didn't take the whole planet out. It's bad enough that it tilted the earth on its axis, but they wanted to make sure this was not going to a, cause a cascade and take everything out because you could do something that will cause a cascade to take everything out. So what I'm saying is there's good and there's not so good everywhere. There's poison and there's medicine. Everything has its opposite. It all depends on your point of view. If you start focusing on the good, if you start minding your business, never mind what they said about the aliens and how they always look the same and they're coming to eat you. Some things don't want to eat you. The amount of poison and cancer and disease you got in your body because of what you chose to eat. We got toxic water, toxic air, toxic food, toxic soil. You think they want to come down here and mess with you? But you, your own self, 
may just be the enemy. It is in you. Now, some people don't want to hear this. It's okay. We're worried about vampires and these serpent beings that's coming to get us. That's because of just in your mindset. And mm. believe me, I lived in a place where I was that. I, li- I knew all of that. I was into it all. I studied it all until I met some beings. Whoa. Whoa. I tell you what. Pause right there. You said something, and we're getting ready to get into I, why I think a lot of people are waiting to hear this Bermuda Triangle, what happened, and everything else. But just a second. You mentioned something, and, and you mentioned the word poor, and I was thinking about that just well ago. And I remember an acronym of poor, meaning past over opportunity repeatedly. <laughs> That's why most people are poor. And whatever the opportunity is, the metaphor for anyone, whether it's to get better, whether it's to get your mind right, your body right, even like myself, you know, I'm on a new journey and most people should know in about a few weeks, actually two weeks, I'll be at Billy's house and we're going to be starting uh, the weight loss journey. His sister is doing her own show. Uh, She, you know, Maria Carson, and she's a world champion weightlifter as well as uh, you know, I'm going to be her subject in the first season and we're going to see about getting some things off. Okay. So, um, and I don't even know why I brought that up. It just I, I, can, I, can I say something really quickly? Yeah. What do you mean? I, you, you I, got the floor. I, I, I'd like to help you. Okay. Never say weight loss. Oh yeah. I remember I'm releasing because if you lose my body, you are, you already taught me. If I say anything about losing the mind, the body is going to try to get it back. It's Quite looking good. for it. It's Don't looking. lose. I'm releasing the one death. of the most Our powerful weight. things is your language. Yes. yes. The yes. way we use the language. You've got the language of disempowerment. Yes. And the language of empowerment. Absolutely. The le- and I'm gonna give you this. The language of disempowerment was taught to us by the aliens that wanted to use us as a host. What? Okay. All right. Your yeah. language, that especially the English, English, angle, right. Half the words, you don't know what they really mean. And they borrowed words, the British borrowed words from everybody and put this together to keep people what in a lockdown. Your language can be your lockdown or, lock, or your liberator. And th- then my language is, like I said, I'm going to l- release the goddamn weight. That's okay, right. check it out. Check it out. That's what I'm going to do. Check it out. You got to say cancel, cut, delete, and clear really quickly. Cancel, cut, delete, and clear right now. Because you said, God damn. Damn, I sure did. And what you, you did, there was a flow of energy that flowing from the top of your head, from the cosmos, through okay. the top of your head, through your center, through your core, through your chakras, into the earth. And then the earth sends a pulse back up. But you got it. You put a dam in your solar plexus. Which blocked you damned up the river. Where you you were got damned so you don't be goddamned you a don't flow. damn up nothing you're flowing you're in a flow state yeah. don't get me started don't let the don't let the right don't let the don't let the the yeah. mental parasites keep you from getting to your goal I'm because we're you. we're in a place right now that we have never been before there's an opening in the universe for us those flow. of us who are ready to let the past go Flow. And it's a challenge. I know it's a challenge. And those of who us who are ready to realize that we're three feet from gold, don't stop digging. Stay focused. Stay clear. And guess what? Don't get caught up in the bull. And make sure y'all are liking this video. We got now. We got over twenty two hundred people in here right now. If all of you smash the like button right now, just take a moment because I know you find him value in what he is spitting and no, what he is flowing out right about now. And so I know y'all find some value in it. Hit the like button. Also, we're going to be doing some stuff on the Why the Big Secret YouTube channel. Why the Big Secret YouTube channel. Um, We need about a couple hundred people to hit 11,000 subscribers. So if you have not subscribed to the Why the Big Secret YouTube channel, there is a link in this video down in the description. You can go over there and hit subscribe, please. Hey, just do it. And uh, we'll definitely appreciate you doing that. And also the link to vote for Roderick is in the description of this video. What about, Man, the, link, what about the link to vote for Dr. B? 
Okay, well, you all right? What what we shoot? Let's do it. We need to put get up. We'll make one. Vote, vote for, for Dr. B. Vote so for you, Dr. B. I'm running so for president. Like for the United States of America? For the world, for the universe. Oh. Guess what I'm gonna do? You want to get like shot at or something? You, you no, you, I'm gonna make everything you. legal. Like what? Everything. I'm gonna make it all legal. Everybody will get their I, own I, choice. I tell you what you can do. <laughs> I'll tell you what you can do because I've experienced this. There's every license that I ever heard of has an expiration date, except for the freaking marriage license. If you can change that with a two-year expiration date, we will save a lot of trouble. You, you get what I'm saying? Well, you looking at your spouse and say, look, I'm not renewing the license with you this time. We, we're just not going to do it. Or at midnight, I this is officially done. But every license out there, why is that? Now, if you put that on the ballot, that you are going to make marriage license renewable and they expire, you got my vote. I'm not, not going to make that legal. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you, before you get married, check your gut. Because <laughs> the minute you met the person, you got a gut feeling that told you go or not go. But then after, you know, so a few lobsters and ham bones, right? <laughs> and the high heel shoe dinners and all that kind of stuff and shirts and ties. You get caught up in the idea. But your right, right. gut, you should never doubt your gut. Mm. Then if you doubt your gut, then your marriage becomes a mirage. So in other words, you look at her and right before you give or it ain't her, you better say they because you get hey. in trouble. Oh, yeah, we, we got the cancel culture here. You look at it <laughs> or whatever. And you say, you know what, my gut feeling telling me this ain't gonna work out. I'll see. But you be later. honest though, up front. Yeah. First date, tell them, look, I'm not doing Valentine's Day. I don't do this. I don't do that. And if you get sick, I'm not gonna be there for you. Tell the truth. You know, <laughs> right, and I'm, right. you know, and you know, they, 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 they made me a minister years ago, so I got the paperwork right. I don't marry anybody. Okay. Why? Because I don't believe them. It's a lie. Because mm. you have not conquered your own intimate entities. So we're mm. talking about the entity out there, but yeah. the entities in you, in your own mind, you got to conquer them first. You got to conquer what's in you, the poison, the toxin, the language, the feelings that may not be yours, that you have what? You're modeling. You've taken them on. You think it's yours because your parents gave it to you. They passed it down to you. A way of thinking, a way of feeling, a way of looking at things. It's all a perception. So I am saying that we have to make real choices and be honest and be truthful. Do you, do you, do you feel what I'm saying? I feel what you're saying. And... We don't need a license because okay. most of the license is a lie. Most of what you like is a lie. Do you know that the word like and lie in the subconscious means the same thing? And most of the things that you really? like, you really don't like. And when you say you love somebody, right? Half the time, you don't really love them. You mm -hmm. like them a lot. Until they, some drama comes up, then you hate them. Well, you never could love them because love, which is the life organically vibrating right. effortlessly, is happening no matter what. You can't control love. If you can control love, it's not love. It's like a lot. <laughs> You've just been haunted, right? We want to talk about haunting. You've been haunting by the misuse of words. Well, I guess that's Facebook meta figured that out. Now you like posts, but you really people liking what they love, right? Or thinking. And then you got a little red heart when the heart is really green. What's up with that? The heart is green. Why is it red? See, there's a trick going on. See, there's cognitive dissonance. If you allow it, if you're not ready to see, then guess what? You're blindsided. And you're like the little sheep in the in, in the farmer, right, is controlling things. And the farmer ain't even got to put up a fence anymore. The sheep mm. won't even leave because of the language is locking them down. The way they're acting is locking them down. The way they're looking at each other, judgment, the way we judge each other. That is the alien creature that's eating you alive. You ain't got to worry about something coming 20,000 years, a million years through the light years through space to get you. You getting yourself. So why the big secret? Why won't they just put it out there about the They, alien? they, they okay. live. They live. All right. <laughs> they live. They live to do what? Did you saw the movie? Yeah, they saying, live, these yeah. beings, they they live to use your energy, and you got to put the glasses on. Wow. Once you put the glasses on, you stop waiting for them to tell you anything. You just know, and you need to move silent right about now. Because if you get too loud, and you start moving a little too much and talking a little too much, guess what happens? They come to visit you. They came to visit me in the music industry. Yeah. 
And they mm-hmm. had them suits on that don't wrinkle and them shoes that ain't really touching the ground. And they look at you with a certain look and they don't blink. And they start telling you what you're going to do. That's the man in black. And their blood. I can see the blood pulsing under their skin was blue. I said, oh God, this is the blue bloods. <laughs> Who are they? My yeah. point right now is if we start taking back ourselves. See, this is why I, I have these cleanses. I have these parasite cleanses where you can detox your system. When you detox your system from these parasites, from these, from these entities and these toxins, all of a sudden you think different. You think different because you're more balanced. You're more full. You don't walk around in fear. You see something in the sky, you walk out to meet it. Say, come on down, y'all. What's happening? Mm. When I was hanging out with Dick Gregory, you know, Dick Gregory would tell me about these beings that he met in Utah. I think it was Utah, somewhere out in the desert. Do Utah got a desert? Anyway, he was out somewhere, right? And these beings landed, and, you know, he met them, and they didn't have any navels. He would talk about how they were actually really, you know, very, you know, loving beings. They were altruists. They were here to help the planet. This, he, he says, there, he says, B, I want you to meet them. I was like, I don't, I don't know if I was scared at the time. I don't know if I want to meet them, man. He says, they're good beings. They come here to wake you up. So as much evil is going on, it has to be the opposite at the same time. So if you lean towards love, peace, and harmony, you'll get more of that. Now, I'm not saying don't protect yourself. Somebody, you know, do something to you, you better be ready to handle your business. Yeah, you got to be able to. You got to be ready. You have to be careful, but you also have to have love for yourself first. And if you vibrate with enough love, and never mind peace, because the peace is just a piece of a pie. I don't want peace. I need wholeness. And when you begin to become whole, right? Preach. Well, everything changes when you become whole. And you will realize that you are a beneficent being that's been traveling through space and time and dimensions forever. You are the light wave. You are everything. But you got to be courageous and have love and realize that if you can be taken, you will. If you allow yourself to be taken, you will. You will. Yeah, I think a lot of people look for that. Here's what we're going to do, as we promised about the Bermuda Triangle conversation. I'm going to play the awards uh, video one more time. And when we come back, Doc, we're going to jump into that Bermuda Triangle story. Fair enough? Yes, sir. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I want to talk to you about a very special event coming up July 30th, 2023, the Forbidden Conscious Awards, the first annual event of its type. We're going to honor people who have been contributing to the conscious community for decades. People that you know and love that have helped you get to higher levels of thought and consciousness and awareness. And guess what? It's time to give them their flowers while they're still alive. It's going to be a live in-person event, but seats are going to sell out very fast. You want to make sure you're there in person for this amazing level event. It's going to be above the Oscars, above the Grammys. And guess what? You can help vote for the winners. Voting is available on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And the categories are going to be social media influencer, podcast slash radio host, TV host, actor, director, producer, entrepreneurs, health and wellness, philanthropists, authors, field researchers, archaeologists, space anomaly hunters, and of course, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And you want to be there in person because I'm going to be speaking. That's right. I'll be your keynote speaker that night at the Forbidden Conscious Awards. If you want to come to a mini conference, this is the place to be because I'm going to give you the knowledge that night as well as performances. We have celebrity guests performing. We'll have a halftime show where we're actually going to perform music for you. And don't forget about the pre-event mixer where if you buy a box seat, you'll be in the VIP section and you also have private access to a VIP mixer with celebrity guests. Shake hands, break bread, network, and then walk the red carpet with us and take amazing photos. It's going to be a night to remember. You don't want to forget this. And you help vote by going to ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Go to the Conscious Awards link. You can text in a vote for who you want for any category, as well as if you're out of the country, you can use the web form ballot to still vote for anyone you think is worthy of being honored that night. Make sure you hurry up and get your tickets because they're selling out very fast. I want to see you there. Forbidden Conscious Awards 2023. All right. As always, like I said, vote for Roderick.com for the podcast radio host. 
Uh, if you find value in, in what we're doing here with my man, Dr. B. Serious as well. Uh, and then we're going to vote for him for world leadership. But anyway, this all you simply do. You put the name in there and put your information and we'll do it. This will take you to the Forbidden Conscious Awards uh, voting site. Vote for Roderick. You know, I'm nominated. I I'm there. All right. So here's the deal. The story of the Bermuda Triangle has always been one of the most mystical things that we have had here in our world today, especially with uh, some of the stories of planes missing, uh, history, time portals, wormholes, uh, just some of the most amazing stories um, and some that really have changed what we know today when it comes down to the true thought of time of itself or what people think. Um, and I know when we talked um, and a lot of people want to know, how did uh, you become this deep, right? And there had to have been some shaping experience that had to have been something that you ultimately went through to get to uh, where we are. And uh, yes, uh, Body Electric says y'all should join Roderick's channel. Yes, we need a few hundred people. If you have not uh, you know, subscribe to Why the Big Secret YouTube channel where we do little shows and things throughout the week. There's a link down there, or you can put Roderick Martin's Why the Big Secret. Please uh, definitely um, join the channel. So, Doc, this Bermuda Triangle experience that you had, uh, and I'm going to put up this little slide. This is where it is. You actually had an experience. You was out on a boat. Take us back to that experience which ultimately is why people are seeing you in this light today. Well, you know, I was on a cruise boat and a storm came uh, with my family and the storm came. It was coming from the east. So we were in Bermuda. No, we were actually in Barbados. I mean, uh, 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 what is it, the Bahamas. Mm. So we had to go south to get away from the storm. And I didn't want to just go to bed. I just wanted to go and sit on the bow of the boat because that's why I used to sit at night is on the bow of the boat and meditate and look up at the stars. And as I sat there, I realized that this storm was getting worse and worse. Rain is coming. Rain is moving sideways and the boat is, you know, moving. And, you know, I noticed that the, the, the crew all had on the little, the, 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 the vest with the light blinking. And I remember my father and my brother were in the Navy, and they said, whenever that light is blinking on the vest, that means that they may be in the water at any time. So That's we it. may be in the water at any time. And the wind was blowing. It was making a sound. It was like a howling sound. And I could see the storm on the horizon, and the, the water was being pulled up to the clouds. It's like a mountain of water. This, I'm looking at the edge of the hurricane on the boat as he drives south. But then suddenly, everything went silent. I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't feel my fingers. My hair began to raise up. And I just felt this strange feeling as I sat on the bow of the Carnival Cruise Liner. And all of a sudden, I, this feeling comes about me and I just get this like, Shh! This was about maybe 1.30 in the morning. The next thing I know, the sun is rising. Not only is the sun rising, the moon is rising right next to it. Mm. And the sky looked like somebody took their fingers and put them in different colors of paint and swirled the clouds all around in the sky, different colors. I was sweating. I mean, I was, I don't know what happened because I look at my watch. My watch is still at like 1.30. I still have the watch. It's fused. I can't even turn the dial on my watch. I had a really good Timex watch. It's fused. Something just happened. I don't know what happened, but I don't feel the same. And I look up and I look up at the, the bridge where I can see, you know, where the captain and all of them were. And they all had this look on their face with their eyes just like wide open. They were like in this state of just like, what happened? Next thing I knew, this feeling of anxiety came over me. And I started crying. I was screaming. What happened? What's going on? And something urged me to look over the bow, look over the side of the boat. And it was dolphins all going around the boat clockwise. The dolphins going around the boat clockwise basically spoke to my mind. 
that said everything's going to be okay. Everything will be okay. From that day forward, I started seeing numbers in my head, three, mm. two sets of numbers. I written, I was writing them on my hands, and I didn't want my family and everybody to know. So I tried to act as normal as possible, but something really deep happened to me. I didn't know how to explain it. I couldn't really talk. When I got back home, I wouldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. I basically had snapped. I thought I lost my mind. And I kept trying to go back to figure out what happened to me. And it was just nothing, just blank space. But I had these two sets of numbers that I kept writing over and over and over. I knew that I had had a nervous breakdown. I was gone. And somebody, you know, there was a sister, and this is really interesting. There was a sister that I knew who, you know, because I used to do a lot of consultations. And she had come to me because she was on psychotropic drugs. She was in the military. And she, how can I put this? She had an experience because her job in the military was to go out and to find crafts that had crashed. She had never been on one of these. She was This was her first time. And she said everything was okay when she saw the ship that had crashed. You know what I'm saying? This was like a, a you know, it wasn't a, a, unidentified. It was identified. It was a ship from somewhere else. And she said everything was cool until she felt something grab her hand. And she looked down. And there was a little man. She said he was about three feet tall. And he looked very different. And he grabbed her hand and she freaked out because she knew that this was not a normal human being. Ever since then, they put her on psychotropic drugs because she lost her mind. Interesting thing is her mother, who worked for the post office, had been in the same unit in the military. They chose certain people based on bloodlines to do this work. Whoa. The mama was on psychotropic drugs because they're trying to numb your mind so you don't, you know, so you can be a part of society. So I had been working with her to help her find some balance in life with natural herbs and things like that. She comes to my door. Now, I've been in the house for like maybe two months, three months. I'm not going anywhere. I don't want to talk to anybody. I've snapped. I've lost it. I haven't washed up. I haven't, you know, it's just crazy. I'm not eating. I'm, I'm, I've, I've actually had a nervous breakdown. And she comes to my door and she says, listen, there's somebody who uh, is coming to town. You need to go see him. And she hands me these tickets. I'm not going anywhere. Now, now hold on now. Let me, let me give you one more piece. I was doing lectures every week. Ever since 1994, I was doing natural health, wellness, and metaphysical lectures in Los Angeles. I'm not new to this. You know, I was actually back in the day. And I was doing lectures every week, but when I had this this with this experience, I didn't want to lecture anymore. But when I got back from my trip, I went to the place where I did lectures where they serve food because mm -hmm. I had been fasting. I had to fast on the boat for four days or however long we were on the boat. I think it was a week. But whatever it was, I, I couldn't eat because they were serving everything that had the things that I didn't eat anymore. You know, when you make a new choice, you got to stick with it. You got to stay with it no matter what. So I was fasting on the boat. I wanted some food. And I went to the sisters who made the food. And uh, she basically said, Dr. B, you're glowing. What's happened to you? And I couldn't talk. I was stuttering. She said, what happened to you? And I just was able to write on a piece of paper and say to her, I, I, was, in what I was in the Bermuda Triangle. Mm. She pulled out these books from under the table, these big, thick books. They were about time portals. They were about ley lines, about all these cosmic things. And I, I was like, look, I don't care about that. And she started wow. telling me all these things that was happening and how I needed to be aware that I had been taken. I couldn't remember if I'd been taken. Mm. She asked me, was I going to do a lecture? Because two days later, I usually do my Tuesday night lecture. I said, I don't think I'm going to be speaking. Tuesday night, about five o'clock, I get up out of my bed. I get in my car and I drive to the place. Wow. And it's like over maybe like 150, 200 people in this little small place waiting to see me. Because whenever I went on a trip, there would be a lot of people there to hear my story because I would always talk about my journey. So these people are waiting. I walk in the place and I get on the stage. 
and I talked for three hours about parasites. Wow. The beginning. I don't, I don't remember it. People, there's somebody, there's a person we're trying to find now who actually filmed this. They said, I was drawing equations. I drew, I, I talked about civilizations on other planets. I talked about the beings that have come here that broke through the time window. I talk about all the different beings that have come to the planet and how a lot of us were being used by these parasites. And some of these parasites were microscopic. We think that something microscopic doesn't have intelligence. Well, where'd you get that from? That's part of your ignorance. So basically, I did this lecture for three hours. And all I remember is at the end of the lecture, I do remember this, the lady in the front, she was an older lady, she says, now, Dr. B, now that you scared the hell out of us all, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> and all I remember was saying was, I don't know. Well, you know, you don't want to tell a room full of folks, especially, you know, melanated folks. You right. don't scare the hell out of them and you don't have no solution. Right. So basically, I had some people who, you know, helped to usher me out of there. And I basically went back home and just fell out. And I don't remember what I talked about. I remember, I don't remember what happened on the boat. I don't remember what happened at this lecture. It's, it's nothing. I don't remember it. But from that point on, I'm drawing these numbers on my wall in my bedroom. I'm writing them everywhere. I've snapped. I'm not calling my family. I don't even want to talk to anybody. But this lady gave me these tickets. It said, go see this man speak. I was driven. I went down to see the man speak. The man got up. Now, he's an herbalist. He's a, he's a, he's a, a botanist. Hmm. He gets on the stage, and he begins to show a slide presentation. It's about the prophecy on the wall in San Francisco. He's got slides of the prophecy that was projected on a wall in San Francisco, two miles long, two miles high. It's a retaining wall to keep the high tide from washing the city away. Nobody can put graffiti on this wall because it's guarded 24 seven. This is a high society part of town. The slides began to show all the different beings that have come to the planet. Mm. It talked about life. It talked about the different people, the, the toll text. It talked about the, 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 the Hopi native people, all these different people that were on the planet. It talked about Lumoria. Lumoria, the place was one of the first places that we may have inhabited first when some of us came from wherever. It talked about Atlantis, all these different places. Where the pyramids, all the pyramids were on 19.5 degrees, you know, and latitude. And also a lot of the metaphysical things that happen, or I should say, the deep stuff happens between 19.5 and 33 degrees on the planet. All this is written on this wall. Now, if till recently, I thought that Dr. Ando took the pictures. Mm. I recently, this is just maybe months ago, talked to his wife. She said, no, I took the pictures. Wow. Her name is Callie, Mama Callie. She took the pictures. The prophecy talked about all the different things that have happened on the planet. They showed ships and everything. And it was written like it looked like graffiti. But it couldn't have been graffiti. And they say it disappeared suddenly. You, they didn't wash it off. It was a projection. So here I am. Dr. Ando's talking. And then he shows two numbers on the board, on the slide. He says, this is the star coordinate for Sirius. And this other one is the star coordinate for Orion's belt. Get out of here. That's the two numbers I've been writing. Whoa. I'm freaking out. Oh, my gosh. This is the numbers. They're star coordinates. I've been writing star coordinates. So then, you know, afterwards, you know, he's done with his lecture. And I'm leaving. I'm walking out of the room. And he yells from the, from the stage, Dr. B, don't leave without talking to me. I'm like. How does this guy know? Now, was this Anthony speaking? This is Anthony Ando, Dr. Ando. And, and let me put up his picture again. Uh, he's over to the left side right here, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And on, and on the right side, you got Dr. You, you got uh, Dick Gregory. Yes. 
Okay, Dick Gregory, Dick Gregory was my mentor. Remember, I said earlier he's had these, you know, uh, uh, situations with beings from other worlds, worlds too, and he had taken me on as like his student. Mm. See, but I met Dick Gregory and Doctor Ando in the same year, nineteen ninety six. Doctor Ando calls out and says, "Doctor B, don't leave without talking to me." And when he walks up to me, I'm like, you know, I'm first of all, I'm shocked. I'm still halfway in and out of the world because I've lost my mind. And I don't know how he knows me. And he looks at me and says, he says, look at you. You look just like you do in the prophecy, in the story. What story? Whoa. He says, and he calls his wife. And he says, Kelly, come, look who's here. And she looks at me. And they both are looking at me, talking to me like they know me. I've never okay. seen these people. Wow. Dr. Ando says, you, do, what, do you know what's going on here? And I says, no. He says, I need you to call me. And the next day I called him. And we talked for two hours on the phone. And he says, hey, you know, I'm just listening because I can't talk. He says, I know you've been working on a formula. I says, I have. He says, every night you've been working on a formula for parasites to protect us from mental, physical, and spiritual parasites and entities from other worlds. You've been working on this. And I'm like, no. And he's like, cusses me out. You don't lie. You know, you. And I'm, I'm like, mm. have I? I had been sleepwalking every night. Well, wow. in my laboratory, I was working on a formula for parasites, not just the ones in your colon. That's the simple ones. We're talking about ones that live systemically throughout your body, even your brain, ones that live in the etheric realm, ones that live in the spiritual realm. I was working on a formula to change everything, and this was downloaded to me. So I go see Dr. Ando, and I'm going to give you this real quick. I show take him the time. take time. Take it. I give him. I give him a bag of these herbs that I've been working on. This is the next time I saw him. He says, "Bring what you've been working on." So I go to my lab. I find it. I bring it to him, and he says, "It's almost done. You're missing three herbs." Now he never opens the bag, but he just knew it. He's a Dogon priest. Mm. He says, "I want you to go back. I need you to watch the movie They Live." I said, "Watch They Live." I remember watching that back in the seventies. He says, "Watch it again." It's the closest thing to reality. You need to know what you're dealing with, Dr. B, and how hard it's going to be to get people to jump on board with you. These beings are using people as host. I'm like, wow. I go back, and there's three herbs, and then, you know, when you get my book, my book will be out soon. It's almost done now. But I explain how this thing went. But basically, I was coming up with a formula to eradicate parasitic entities. Dr. Ando looks at me, and my, now my name at that time is Brother B. They used to call me Brother B. And they used to call me Doc, Doctor in the music business because I would splice your track up and edit it, and I knew how to make your music sound good. So I was also called Dr. B. Mm, okay. Dr. Ando tells me, says, now after I come up with this formula, he says, this is it. You have done it. You have a big job to do. We have been waiting for you for a long time. We knew you would come. Ooh From now on, your name is Dr. B. Serious. Mm, mm, mm. I said, Serious? He said, like the star. He said, go outside and look in the sky. And when you find Sirius, Orion is always pointing to Sirius. And when Sirius knows that you are looking at it, it will send back a pulse wave of red, white, and blue. I'm like, red, white, and blue? A star? I go outside that night and look outside. I'm looking at the star. So I know how to find Sirius because I've been looking at Sirius since I was a dog, when I was a, a child, next to my dog named Major, who's a canine, right? My dog is named Major. He's a canine. The mm. Sirius star is in Cana, Canis Major, which is the big dog. I had been looking at this star since I was a child. The twinkle, twinkle little star, how I wonder what you are. He says, you are Dr. B. Serious. When that star connects with you, you're going to get a download. And guess what? I got a download. And if you look at Sirius, some of you will see it. You will see it's blinking, slightly red, slightly blue, red, white, and blue. That's how I became Dr. B. Serious because Dr. Kwaku Andu named me that. And he said, your job is to help people deal with parasites. And most of the parasites are entities within themselves. Whew. 
That's the most, that's your biggest enemy is what's in a you. It's your enemy, in a you. So my trip from the Bermuda Triangle took me on the journey to meeting yet another mentor. I met Dr. I, I met Dick Gregory. He was guiding me. But I also met Dr. Ando, and I didn't meet him. We didn't hang out a lot. I only talked to him maybe six times. But every time he talked to me, he was downloading this information. Mm. Dr. Ando is an amazing, amazing character. His wife is too. In fact, this is one of his books. The Science and Romance of Selected Herbs Used in Medicine and Religious Ceremonies. This is one of his books. I would get this book. Hold it up a little for a second. I'm going to move myself off the screen. That way it'll be. All right. Okay. Dr. Quaker Wando. He also had a school called the North Scale Institute where he taught botany. You know, he was also Jimmy Carter's botanist for many, many years. He worked, you know, he, he had special government clearance and everything. In fact, there's some herbs that are here now that people use. Like moringa, you hear about moringa. People talk about eating, taking moringa for energy and all this. He brought moringa to the United States. The several plants and things that he introduced to you know the Western world. So this situation took me to becoming, you know, my life changed at this particular point. This changed my path. I was in a path where it was a lot. There was I was in a world where there was a lot of people. Natural health is really big. Natural health today, right? Holistic health is a $44 billion industry. This is natural health. <laughs> Holistic health is $44 billion, with a B, dollar industry. Because people want to get healthy all over the place. You see? And I was in that business. I was making my own herbal products. I was doing all these things. But I wasn't making a parasite cleanse until this particular thing happened to me. That's when I got into parasites. And I realized something very interesting. There are regular parasites that live in the colon. They're easy to get rid of. You could use like eat papaya seeds and certain herbs like cloves and black walnut and wormwood and even diatomaceous earth. You could use those things to get rid of your regular colon parasites, but they're not the ones that are the most dangerous. What's the most dangerous are what they call uh, systemic parasites. They live throughout the body. So earlier I mentioned a parasite named Toxoplasma. Dr. Ando kept talking about something that happened 6,000 years ago. I remember at this time, my mind is half gone, so I can't even really focus very well. Go back 6,000 years, he says. 6,000 years ago, there were things that appeared in the sky all over the planet. Mm. Vehicles, ships all over the planet when they landed people begin to change people begin to become divided people begin to have anger and hate and envy for each other it changed people check this out how am i gonna say this you, you just say it like you've been said. You let it flow. You let it come out. You don't stop the word. I mean, me, how am I going to? You don't say things like that. You say, let me tell y'all how it is. Just relax here. I'm trying to, I'm getting it together. Just relax. <laughs> let me have this space. Space is the final frontier. We're going to go where no man has gone before. Gone before. It's That's a five right. year mission. It's an enterprise. You, Kirk, I'm Spock, baby. Let's do it. I ain't Kirk. You're not Kirk. <laughs> you, Kirk, and Spock. You Kirk in you Kirk in spell or Lumbo? Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> the cats that you know of today, the mm -hmm. domestic cats never existed before. The common day cat is a crossbreed that was made in Kemet or Egypt. I'm not talking about the wild cats. I'm not talking about the leopards and the lions. I'm talking about the house cat. Now, wasn't the cat supposed to be able to see the spirits or something? They say that the cats, there was more cats. We got to ask Billy about this because I know Billy's got the other piece to this. He was going to hop in with us, but he, he had to do something else. He texted. He was like, he's man, always, he's, 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 jump he's, in with help. He's always got to do something else. That brother's working 24-7, but check it out. Yeah. The Kemites, the Egyptians, 
they say they crossbred cats. It's like they crossbred wheat for the first time, right? They made wheat. They made okay. a bunch of stuff. Okay. They made the pig. You know what? what I'm saying? To eat dead bodies after wars. It wasn't, we weren't supposed to eat them. You know what I'm saying? Then we got hungry and ate them. But anyway, they say the domestic cat was infected by a parasite drone from 6,000 years ago. Dang it. It's a drone called Toxoplasma that infected the domestic cat. It lives in the cat's gut. And when the cat poops, Toxoplasma is in the cat poop. Hmm. Rats and mice, they are attracted to cat poop and cat urine. They eat the cat poop and they lose their minds. Ooh. And the rat is no longer a rat and it does not run from the cat. No, fear. It just stands there when the cat comes. It doesn't protect itself. It loses its natural instincts. Its perception is off. They say when the cat's away, the mice will play in the feces. Why would the rat or the mouse even be attracted to cat feces, which is supposed to be its enemy? <clears throat> because there's these pheromones and these energies, right? These vapors that are in the cat poop and the cat pee that attract the rat. Wow. The rat eats it and it cannot figure out what it is and where it is and it doesn't run away. So who had more cats than anybody on the planet? I just want to ask questions now. I want to upset people. What happened all of a sudden? Why did Egypt just fall? Yeah. Suddenly. And when the enemy came, they didn't run. This is what I hear. I don't know. Y'all check me now. I could be, I may have lost my mind. I hit my head on the corner or something the other night. Maybe I got a little amnesia. Why did they fall suddenly? They had cats everywhere. They didn't have wild leopards and lions because they would have ate them. This is the domestic cat. Mm. The domestic cat doesn't really have personality in its eyes. It ain't like the lions and all them other animals. They got personality. They didn't let you know. Man, look, you better get out of here. You look like protein. We about to eat your ass. The regular house cat has a certain stare. The cat's poop. Go get you a bag of kitty litter and read the back of it. It says that there could be toxoplasma in the kitty litter. The kitty litter makes dust. The cat poops in the kitty litter and the dust is in the air and the dust gets in people. Ooh. The larva of toxoplasma is in the kitty litter. Why do you think they tell you when a woman is pregnant that she cannot be around cats? Go check it. Go look it up. It says a pregnant woman cannot be around cats. Why? Because they know that the toxoplasma will cause the baby's brain not to develop correctly. This is science I'm talking. Toxoplasma. The child will get toxoplasmosis. And the brain will not develop. When adults and other people, when beings get toxoplasma, they forget how to protect themselves. They don't run away from the enemy like they should. They don't even know what is the enemy. They calling the enemy the enemy when the enemy might be their friend. They're afraid. They live in fear. They talk fear. They talk about how everything is bad, how everything is, is, is terrible. It's a struggle. That's the language of toxoplasma because toxoplasma plays with your perception. It plays with things that in your mind, it plays tricks on your mind. Toxoplasma, check this out. When I went to the feedlots, because I wanted to see where the chickens and cows and all that was at, so somebody snuck me in many years ago. All right. <clears throat> they did it because I wasn't going to stop eating chicken. I love chicken. I could, chick I, could, I could bake chicken to the point where the bone was burnt and the flesh wasn't. I was a broaster. I knew how to cook chicken. The especially chicken the wings. Man. Chicken wings? She I would cook she like ain't got nothing on you. Man, let me tell you something, man. So I wasn't going to stop eating chicken. I had become a vegetarian chicken eater. <laughs> so my friend took me to this place, Zaki Farms or someplace up in Northern California. 
and to the chicken place so he so I could see it. And he snuck me in. I forgot how we did this, but he had a special badge. And guess what? All over the ground, there was nothing but feces, mm. feathers, dead birds, urine, maggots, and rats. And one more thing. You ready? One more. Cats. And the cat wasn't messing with the rats. And I asked the farm guy, why are there cats in here? He said, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> he says, wherever there is rats and mice, there's cats. And he says to me, he says, well, and this is a good thing, because there's something in that cat poop that keeps the animals domesticated. Whoa. They won't run away. I'm like, what? What? What's in it? He says, I don't know. Something's in there. That's the deep. domesticated animals don't run away. One, because they're domesticated and crossbred. They don't know where they're going because they're not natural. They don't know how to take care of themselves. Number two, they're not afraid because they're full of toxoplasmas in their brain living in the, the amygdala. The amygdala is the part of the brain that helps you regulate what you should be afraid of, what you should move towards. It regulates you know, whether you should be courageous or not. It keeps you as a prisoner. You're lost. Because of toxoplasma, it's in the cows, it's in the chickens, it's in the pigs, everything living in that hot house. Because the cats are, pit, are, are pooping it out. Mm. I know, I know mm. you don't want to hear you, you need it. No, I mean, no, we listening. Oh, you it may really me. help you on your new journey, but check it out. Well, I mean, I'm not finna eat a damn cat. I, 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 I real, you, I not, you ain't got it, but you might eat the chicken or the chicken. I might see, eat some chicken. You see, you might, but I'm just letting you know that. You know, you we all have to make our choices. I'm not telling you to be a vegan, vegetarian, or anything. I am saying that uh, the average person today doesn't realize that a lot of their thoughts and feelings are being controlled by toxoplasma because they're saying now, look it up, look the numbers up, that anywhere between 50 and 70% of the people on the planet have toxoplasma. Mm. There's a book. Where's the book? Do I have it right here? Uh, I don't have it right here. There's a book called... Um, Oh, uh, your brain. This is your brain on parasites. Where is it? <laughs> Used to be your brain on drugs, right? No, the new one is the. This is a really good book. It's written by a group of people. They're called psychoparasitologists. Hmm. This is your brain on parasites. What did I do with it? I had it right here for the talk. See the see the toxoplasma's messing with me. See what I'm saying? Well, it's going fine. But why are you doing that? I got a shout out to a gentleman. He, username is Freeze380. He texts and said, Roderick, please stop talking and let Dr. B do his thing. I always love when I see messages like that because I would like to tell you, you can get your own show. You can go and you don't have to watch it. You don't have, this is a conversation. This is not a lecture. And if you can't stand the conversation, you might not want to be here. Mr. Freeze. Uh, I just want to point that out because I do read the chats. I just I want to thank you. And if you want to go to war with that, I will just <laughs> block you out of here. You ain't got to come back to the channel. Right. This is a conversation. I hope everybody's enjoying the conversation and understand that uh, in between there will be dialogue. There's, it has to be uh, from there. Where, where you put the book, man? You got it. I, this is crazy. But the book, just look at, look, and look it up right now. In fact, you can search for it right now. It's called okay. Your Brain on Parasites. Okay. I'm it's a, it's a book. It's about, and then I'll bring about, it a, it's about a year old, about a year old, and they talk about all these parasites that control people's brains. And how they're saying that religions and political groups and families and all of these different things have been divided and played with by parasites, which are like alien entities. That are controlling mankind. All right. This is, it. you got the book? I got it. I'm going to screenshot it. Please and, screenshot and, this book. Everybody need to get this book. And do you know, at the same time this book is popping up, there's images of cats for some damn reason? Maybe yeah, it's listening. I'm trying to tell you what's trying to get. You, you need to listen. I know yeah, some people say, but I, I love my cat. I didn't say you shouldn't love your cat. You need to know that the cat poop, read the back of a kitty litter. I'm it not. says that it has toxoplasma. 
It's I'm telling not you over there today. She's gonna be like, "Come on, my house. nope, no cat." Well, I mean, we don't look. I was gonna do an adult joke here. We will come for the cat, but you just don't want to see the cats roaming around. That is bad. I hope all the kids are bad. I hope they really are asleep right about now. The, the children know how to take this information and use it. They're not <laughs> afraid. I'm trying to tell you, it's the adults that don't want to let go of some of the ways that they live. All right. So did you find there, the it is, there right we there. go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Please read that book. How tiny creatures manipulate our behavior and shape society. The wow. book is all about this new study called psychoparasitology how the psyche is being controlled by parasites. And we think of them, and scientists, they talk about this in the book, scientists for many years didn't want to admit that these little tiny creatures could be controlling people. They can control mm. the world. They control political groups. This is, they say, what happened 6,000 years ago that caused villages to begin to fight each other. You had tribalism and all this stuff. People began to fight on the planet. Even people of color in Africa, no matter where it was, people began to drift and change because they're saying that now the concept is that whatever landed on the planet at that particular time mm -hmm. seeded the planet with these drone parasites. They're like drones, they say. And they are in the people's brains. Mm. And the reason why people are acting like they do is so much haterism. It's like, you know, it's just like when you, when, when you, people, like, like even in the news, they say the news that leads is the news that bleeds. Right, right. People want to see drama. They need to see blood. They need to see fighting. They need to hear about war. And they're gravitating towards that. That's not natural for people. It's not natural for you to gravitate towards evil. Why do you? We do because we're being manipulated. And we're told to be afraid of things that may not even truly exist. A lot of the times you don't even have any, any evidence of what you're afraid of. And a lot of times we're afraid of ourselves. We're afraid of being our best, doing our best. We have the fear, and fear is the false evidence appearing real. False expectations what appearing real. Mm, mm, mm. The anticipation of lo of loss or pain, that's fear. Like I said, there's a healthy amount of fear. But what I'm saying is that we, our, we are being manipulated from afar by some beings that dropped off some seed-like creatures, some seed things, these things, toxoplasma. And, you know, somebody asked me one day, they said, and this guy was a, a he was a, a doctor and he was deep and he said isn't it interesting that people who go through basic training will run towards bombs and gunfire he says what do you think it would take for a person who naturally would be running away from you know a danger zone to run towards it mm, okay now it's not like you're going to save anybody in the war because you fight you don't even know what you're fighting for you have no idea what that war is about. I'm not talking about somebody that runs in the house to save somebody that's in there. I'm talking about people that run and go out here blindly to fight a war that they know nothing about. They, you can't even ask questions. Why does our government feel that, you know, they need more weapons? Look, I remember the, the, the movie, the original movie, The Man, The Man Who, uh, The Man, what, The Day the Earth Stood Still, the original one. Oh, yeah. Dude lands in the ship on the White House lawn. He pulls this thing out and they shoot him. He's like, why did y'all shoot me? They said, well, you were pulling out a weapon to kill us. He says, no, I was giving you this device so that you could communicate with all the populations of beings throughout the galaxy. But y'all done <laughs> shot me <laughs> because we're already afraid. We lead with fear. We lead with guns. You know what I'm saying? We're always in fear mode now. Why are we in fear mode? Because we've become inferior. We have an inferiority complex and we're worried that somebody's going to hurt us. So that's what we lead with. So your reticular activating, right? A system, which is the part of your brain that focuses on things and what it, it, it shields out everything else is focusing on danger. If you focus on danger, it expands. If you focus on war, it expands. If you focus on hate, it expands. If you focus on love, it expands. If you focus on peace and wholeness, it expands. If you focus on being wealthy and being healthy, it expands. I can prove it to you. Because when I was focusing on certain things, they became real. 
So once you feel, you realize that, wow, this whole thing is about population control. This whole thing, they got, you know, there's a few people pushing some buttons, like the in the Wizard of Oz, pushing some buttons behind the curtain, making you, you think, you don't think you can get home without a certificate? You can't, you don't have a heart without a certificate? Mm. You don't think you have a brain? You got to be told everything. You got to be led everything. You can't be a free person. Why? Because people who uh, have been, oh, you ready for this? I'm ready people for it. Who, people who have been oppressed over a certain amount of time become oppressive. They will oppress themselves. They will self-sabotage themselves. Once you've been oppressed for a certain amount of time, when you get a little bit of light, you get out of the gate just a little bit. You oppress other people. Mm. Why will you do it? Why do people who've been in prison for a long time sometimes protect their captors? It's crazy. It's because you've got this new relationship with them. So people who have been oppressed, I'm going to say it one again, once again, will become oppressive. Now all you need is fear. A person who is oppressive is fearful. It's just like the narcissist is full of fear. Fear was created by men, not by women. Fear was created by men, not by women. Women weren't afraid of nothing. They were singing songs and playing, you know what I'm saying, and cooking and doing their thing and burning fires and singing a tone and a frequency. And they were spiritually aligned with a vibration and a rhythm so that the lions, the wolves and the deer or whatever was not the deer, but the wolves and the, 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 the bears wasn't coming into the village because the women had a rhythm. See, now, when the woman loses her rhythm, when the queen, right, when the queen loses her vibration, then you have colony, colony collapse disorder. When you take the, the the divine feminine, right, and make her weak and make her up and make her put on high heel shoes and make her wear this fake stuff. See, I'm getting deep now. She's made up. She's not real. And then you tell her that she's afraid of everything. Women will kick ass. Martial arts was, was that's women. If you if you if but men have put have have suppressed the woman to a point, right? It, 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 I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to be a little careful how I say this. Well, I mean, we don't men, we men, we men have done some of this suppression unto women. So we mm -hmm. have this image of women and women have an image of themselves that's not really real. If we are to survive and make it on this planet, we're going to have to go find the divine feminine and raise that up. We're going to have to find, well, what's, what's up with the woman? Where is she at? She's acting a certain way because men want her to act that way. I know we're getting into something we weren't talking no, about, but no, I'm, I know. I'm, so, I'm, are, I'm you, are, to, I'm, are you saying that women that's walking around talking about I don't need no man? We created that. What I'm saying is most of the oppressive and suppressive activities of people was created by another group of people where people that like you may have to act, you may act a certain way. So you figure you want to. Let's say a woman wants to get a man. So today she may feel she's got to wear this. She's got to put this on. She's got to talk this way to attract a man. But usually the man that she attracts, because she got all this fake up on, right? The man that she attracts is fake. And she wants to know years later why it didn't work out, because you attracted a fake man. A real man is going to support the woman. A, a, a real man is going to be down with however she comes. A real man is not going to instill fear in a woman. And have her afraid and have her worshiping something. Look, I, I don't know if I should say that because we're on the radio and, you know, I don't I mean, know. You know. The we... average woman today is not the average woman from the past when God was a woman. When God was a woman was what they call paganism. God was a woman in the pagan days. They believed and they knew that what they call uh, an animism Animism mm -hmm. was the belief that everything was alive and everything should be given respect. Everything. They also, their, their system back in those days said that nature was the one that was leading everything. You got to go with the flow of nature. Okay. The wind, the trees, the way the water is moving, the stars, everything was a part of that world. But at that point, they considered God a woman. Because they could give birth. It's an alien idea. I need to hear me right now. 
It's an alien idea that God should be a man. It's a very suppressive thing. Even when you read a lot of these quote, unquote, holy books, I'm not going to name which ones. It's all about the men. Men, 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 men. Now, I don't know about this thing about, you know, oh boy, you know, I don't need a man. I, that's that's something else. I'm not talking about that. I am saying that we right now, in order for us to make it, are going to have to get out of fear mode. And fear is a combination of men being uh, 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 invaded with the mindset of fear, toxoplasma, okay, and suppressing the world and making everybody believe that they need to be protected from everything. I mean, even in these movies where they go in space, right? They always got a bunch of guns. Have you noticed? Okay. They feel like everything is going to be evil. Everything is out to kill you. It is not. So we, you know, look, I remember when I was young, that thing was that the Russians could blow up the world 30 times. I'll never forget this, man. Fifth grade. They said that the Russians could blow up the world 30 times. And America was worried because America could only blow the world up 10 times. I need you to stop for a minute. Okay. The Russians could blow up the world 30 times. 30 We're times. worried about it. You, you can only blow the world up yeah, one, time. one time. That's it. So we need to spend all of our money on defense. One bomb, my brother and my people out there, I need y'all to hear this. One missile that they shoot at the enemy could feed every person in the United States. Two missiles could clothe everybody in the United States. Three missiles could feed, clothe, and house everybody in the United States. Why don't they do it? Just three, just, just, just don't shoot three missiles. And you find that when you go out into the world that we may be the ones that's very offensive here. We talk about what some of these people did, what, you know, oh boy, he was trying to kill everybody. What are we trying to do? We think that we're doing okay, but we live in fear. We live in fear, and I'm going to break it all the way down. We live in fear because we've got an inferiority complex, and we have been taken over by parasites. The beings that are controlling us are doing it from afar, just like you do with a drone. They ain't got to be here. We've been seeded. Some of the people listening right now are fighting with this. People are sweating because, see, that parasite knows when it, when it hears this, that, oh, my God, don't get rid of me. Don't go to Dr. B's website and get that cleanse product that he got that would get that parasite out your head. And some people say, well, look, right. I, I got something for parasites. I got my clothes, my wormwood. They got to go a little parasite, you know, program that they bought from the store. Somebody sold them or they made it themselves. You, in order to get rid of toxoplasma, and there's about six parasites that control your mindset and your nervous system, you cannot do it with common herbs. It cannot be done. It's got to be done in a 28-day moon cycle. You can, it can't just use herbs. You got to use uh, flower essences. You've got to use uh, uh, essential oils. You've got to use crystals. And you've got to use quantum physics. How do you use quantum physics, Dr. B? Well, there's lights and there's things that you can use. And there's frequencies. Like I put music, musical frequencies on my herbal products. I'm not saying my stuff is the best. I'm saying I'm very good at helping people eradicate systemic parasites that live throughout the body. So there's parasites that live in the lungs, they live in the, the heart, they live in the kidneys. A lot of people with diabetes have the diabetic fluke worm living in their, in their, di in, 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 in their pancreas. A lot of people that have you know, immune problems have these parasites, these, these fluke worms that live in the thymus. What I'm saying is that we, because of the way we're eating, the way we're living, are inviting in these entities that have taken over. So it's you're saying we're we're providing the the perfect environment for them. We are creating the perfect environment, and we don't realize it. Most of our foods have never existed. I mean, why would they put niacin? Did you know that they put nicotine in almost every major cereal in America? My fruit loops. I just ate nicotine. Look on the label. It'll say niacin. Or to say nias, uh, niacinamide. I forgot how they how they say it. Mm. It's nicotine. Why would you have it in cereal? So that the people can grow up to be craving nicotine. There's chemicals and things 
that they put in food <laughs> that caused you to be hooked on that food for the rest of your life. Sugar. Check this out. White sugar. White sugar is one of the number one drugs in the world. White processed sugar is only a few molecules away from cocaine. Sugar cane, mm -hmm. cocaine. We're hooked on it. Did you know that when you eat white processed sugar or brown sugar, or there's even this one they call sugar in the raw now, that it goes straight to your brain and shuts down your brain function by 50%. Your pineal gland, which is basically your spirituality, your connection to the universal God or the, 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 the quantum field, the hypothalamus, which regulates temperature, and regulates and lets you know when you've had too much of something. It's called the hypothalamus. Then you got the pituitary, which basically puts out oxytocin, which is the love hormone. When you eat this sugar, those three glands shut down. So you keep eating sugar because you don't know you've had enough of it. You don't know when you had enough of the BS that's going on in your life. You can't regulate. Your pineal gland shuts down. People talk about the pineal's been calcified. No, the pineal's been sugarfied. Sugar shuts down the pineal. Sugar shuts down the love hormones. So you don't really love people a lot of times. You just like them a lot. You call it love. Oh, I love you. But you don't really love them. Oh, <laughs> much love to you. Much love, my brother. And you don't even know what love is. Because what if you, you love... You to your woman, though. Hey, I like you a lot today, baby. That wouldn't work. Be truthful. I like you a lot. I like you so much that I'd like to be with you for the rest of my life. But I, you know, you we we're using language that we don't understand because language is our lockdown. Like when you want something, want is the desire without action. I teach a whole class on the language and how to use language to work for you. This language was taught to us. This is a confusing language. You got forty-eight sounds and twenty-four letters, and this G is J, and it's it's weird. So you get mixed up. You don't know what you're saying. So a lot of folks don't know how to say this truth and speak the truth and eat real food and live a real life. They don't know what that means. So when they're talking about the metaverse, you've been in the you've been in the metaverse most of your life. You're talking about artificial intelligence. What about artificial intelligence came way before computers? They've been lying to you a long time, telling you that it was intelligence on the news. It was Walter right. Cronk, Walter Cronkite back in the days. Here we are right now. They just landed on the moon. Let's listen to what he has to say. This is a small step for man and a giant leap for mankind. And he jumps down, right? You don't notice that the flag is blowing in the back. You don't see three. It's three shadows of the ship. The man's got three shadows on the ground. It's only one sun. There would only be one shadow. Why is there three shadows? You don't even see the crosshairs in the picture to let you know that they put this together. And this is on a Hollywood film set. Yep. The moon landing, baby. So what I'm telling you, half of what they're telling you in the news is the noose and it's hanging you. And you go along with it because you're already sick. And we stay glued to the television. They say, back to you, Jim. Back to you, Jane. Back to you, Charlie. Back to you. Why is your back to me? This is these stories and more in a moment. Why they got to be stories? That, that's not the truth. These are not facts. I remember I was in L.A. and they said, this is the eyewitness news. And they got there with the mic. Now, tell us what happened, Jim. Well, I was walking out and I saw a UFO in the sky and, and then the cows ran. And I, and I thought you was the if you was the eyewitness news, you're supposed to be there. Did, weren't, didn't you witness it? The news is hanging you and you believe it. They tell you well, who's running the country. You don't know who's running the country. You have no idea how deep this thing is. My point is, is that we have been invaded for a very long time. And we're being invaded even by our, we're, we're, we are part of the invasion. So the beings that have come here, that, that the ones that want to use you, they convince you, right, that your vision and things are real. They convince you of something that's impossible and they make it seem real. And you go along with it and you teach it to your children. You see? So what happens is, is we perpetuate these lies. Like, you know, why do they teach the children that the animals talk? Look at the cartoons. The cartoons back in the day was all beating each other up, blowing each other up. And you wonder why the children are all fighting. 
Because you showed them that this was the cartoon, the cartoon, the spirit song, right? The vibrations of the spirit's cartoons. You were watching, you were letting your children, or you saw those things and you believed in it. And you didn't realize that Mickey Mouse was all about a, a control. You didn't realize what Walt Disney was all about. You didn't know that Mickey Mouse was H2O. You see the two ears, and that's hydrogen, and the big, the big nose, and the big face. That's that's a uh, 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 oxygen, because he said he wanted to be liquid and be in every home in, in the planet. Because he was making, you know, a uh, 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 war films to, to tell you what was happening in, uh, in the war, propaganda. Most of the cartoons is propaganda. You propped up, sitting up, watching this stuff, and don't real, realize the sexual images that's going on, and you worried about some parasites or some, some aliens landing from another planet. You are the alien. You got to clean your life up. You got to get to what's real. If you're not ready to get for what's real right now, then you just need to go on. The, the system is, is, is going to hell in a handbasket. But there's some of us who are ready to change this. You got to detoxify your body. Number one. Two, detoxify your mind. Three, you're going to have to get your spiritual mind focused on something that's real and stop focusing on things that sound impossible and they, don't, they can't even prove themselves. True spirituality is when you what? Are spiraling. It's spirituality. That means you don't stay in the same place. Spirituality means you're constantly expanding your life. So the Dr. B of 2000, or, or 2022 is not the Dr. B of 2023. I'm not the same person. I'm not talking the same talk. If you're truly spiritual, you're constantly changing. You don't keep using your singing bowl and your sage and you're doing a seance just like you used to do or reading the same book and praying the same prayer. You're constantly growing and expanding. So you, Roderick, are about to take a journey in just a few weeks where you're going to change. Absolutely. You're going to be a brand new person. Why? Absolutely. Because Dr. B sat with you at, at breakfast that morning and he put something on you. Oh, you did. And then I wrote down all the stuff you told me to do, how to write back with the left hand, the right. I mean, I'm, I'm doing it. You thought I forgot, didn't you? No, you thought, I didn't think you forgot. Don't don't guess now. Don't assume right, nothing. Then. Read the four agreements. Don't Assumption assume is nothing. the mother of all <laughs> F-ups. Yes. So what I'm saying is that what I am allowing you, what I'm allowing myself to do is to help you on your journey. Why? Yes. Because I must have love for you. Absolutely. I felt you. You called me out. I remember when I walked in Billy's house and you were sitting there and you looked right at me in the eyes and we had a connection. Boom. Next thing we're at breakfast. I didn't know you were staying at the whole same hotel. It's a lot of hotels. Yep, How yep. did you end up at the same hotel? Because there was something that we needed to do. And we're doing it. And right now, you know, I'm not looking for likes. I'm not looking for followers. I'm giving some truth the way I see it. And what I'm saying is we have to let go of the devils within us. The aliens that I'm most concerned about are the ones that live around me. Some of mm. my neighbors. Deep. I'm, a, I'm worried about some of the people that call themselves intelligent and conscious and aware. I'm concerned about them because a lot of times it's just pure ego. People just be pumped up with all this information. Right now, we might need a little more intuition than anything else. Right now, we may need to go ask the women, what do you really feel? Let's get away from trying to make the man happy and all this. How do you really feel? Because the women have intuition. They can smell and feel things before we men can. We men need to become specialists, and we need to what, balance this thing out. I'm saying that there is a masculine side to us all and a feminine side. The masculine side is doing, trying to make things happen. The feminine side is attractive. It is, it's magnetic and allowing and being more loving sometimes and more caring. I am saying that we all at this particular time are going to have to outwit the devil. Whoa. The devil exists in our mindsets. And everything that lands in the woods is not evil. Toxoplasma, if you do the right thing, there's a formula, it will leave. People who have done my 28-day detoxification program, it takes like three months to really do it, three moon cycles. 
they wake up and they look around, everything looks different. And they become courageous and they have heart again. And they say, you know, I've been asleep because of sugar, because of foods that never existed, right? The stuff that you buy, most of the stuff in your grocery store is poison because people don't want to grow something and have a garden or go see the, the, the local farmer, which is where we need to be seeing, you know, visiting the local farmers. And we have this vision of love and these feelings that are not really real. So we're like double gangers. We got like walk-ins, the things that have taken over, right, us, and we don't remember when it happened. Mm. People get married and everything and aren't truly married because they're not, le- they're not married on the subconscious level. They're in the window pane of the relationship, just, just in case, just looking into the marriage. Not all in. I got you. So right now, what happened in the Bermuda Triangle for me was I had to wake up from a deep sleep. And whatever happened to me, whatever entities took me, they got me. I'm gone. But I am controlling which entities work through me. Because anything could happen. You have to be the captain of the ship. You have to become the CEO. And realize that there may be saboteurs and pirates on your ship. But also, there are great opportunities out there if you focus and put your lens on those great things. Right now, there's some things happening in this year, 2023, that have never happened before. The gate is wide open. But they got you looking at, oh boy, the train crashed and it's probably going to kill everybody. And oh boy, this happened. See, they keep they keep changing your eyesight to look towards drama. Yep. That's misdirection. That's mass distraction. Most of the people are going to go for that. You can't fix that. What you can do is focus on who you are. Who are you going to be? So on my website, I got classes. I got workshops. You know, that, so website, of, that website is scrolling down there, by the way. Elevationtime.com. There you go. Elevationtime.com. There's classes. There's workshops. I've even got music that changes the frequency of your mindset. There's certain tones and frequencies. Remember, I've been a musician most of my life. I figured out the sacred frequencies that wake you up from asleep. Whoa. Most of the music is tuned to the to what they call the devil's frequency, 440. It's tuned to A440, which is not, this was the frequency Hitler used. Please look it up. 440 hertz was the frequency that they say the Nazis used to cause mind control. 1956 is the year the United States decided to adopt it. But the frequency that wakes you up is 432 hertz. It's just a little flat, but it sounds good. It's more warm because most of the music you're listening to is what it's like they're entities. Music are entities too. You're listening to alien frequencies. You might not think of music as being alien frequencies, but there's beings that live just in music. Wow. There's musical frequencies that will be alien and take over your mindset. You can go online right now. They got like, they have Sade and they'll say, they'll let you hear Sade at 440. Then they'll play Sade's music at 432 and you'll be like, oh my God, that's totally deep. different. Totally because different. Because most of the music you listen to is causing stress. Most of the food that you're eating is causing stress. Most of your ideas and feelings are causing stress. Most of your relationships are stressful. Most of your holidays are stressful. And you don't realize realize it because you've been on the battlefield so long. You think you're supposed to just fight, 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 fight. Becomes normal. It becomes normal, but it's not natural. Right now, the window is wide open and the people that you think and the beings that you think that are controlling the world are not. They got their own drama. Now is the time you can walk right through the window and wake up from the deep sleep. You must be ready. So like I say, on the website, we've got music. I've got 15 classes that I, you know, that we're offering for one price. 15 classes that are deep. We Here's also, we, we also uh, have the, uh, 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 the Blueprint for God Power class, which made history. That was Billy Carson and myself. On January the 7th, we did an 11-hour workshop odyssey class. It was more people on that website, on, I mean, on that class, in that way than ever in history. We made history. 
So you can go to elevationtime.com, go to events, and you can actually join if you didn't take the blueprint for God power. But we gave you the blueprint of how to get out of hell, how to take command of your life, how to refashion your life and, you know, take control and be the CEO again. Are you ready to be the CEO? Are you ready to be the captain? You see, something had to happen to me before I got this way. Some people say, well, Dr. B, you're wild. I am. I'm all over the place. I am. It's because I'm a jazz musician and I'm and it's like a thing. And, and the, 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 the number one power in the world is jazz. You saw the, the man that fell to earth, right? Yep. The number one power, the number one energy source on the planet is improvisation. Didn't they say that? Yep. Jazz, improvisation. There's your website there. And uh, okay, so you said we can scroll down to events where? Go to the top, go to the top, go to the top. Okay, okay go over to uh, events right there. All right, boom. See, metaphysics of feminine energy. I just did that a couple weeks ago. Masculine and feminine energy. Keep going down. There's a free webcast I did there. Keep going. Blueprint for God power. That's the one. It's a replay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can go and invest in that and it changes your life. Because Billy gave out the blueprint for wealth. Oh, my God. Yeah, I watched that. I mean, the plugs that he gave, I told him, you need to open a new company called Plugs R Us. The plugs that he gave that I've already used. He gave one plug for credit repair. My credit in the last three weeks went from, I was in the 700 club, now I'm in the 800 club. Two weeks. He said, well, look, this is the person that you talked to. This, this woman, Jackie Braden, you talked to her for mortgages. She can make a mortgage out of paper mache, almost. <laughs> Guess what? Magical. Everybody that he hooked up with, he showed you how to buy, you know, expensive cars and lease them, lease these cars to the exotic car rental companies. You get the use of the car and they rent it and pay all the bills. He gave so many plugs how to invest in these things called liquidity pools how to take full control of your life and how to command your life so you don't have to be poor. He even gave out the book, Woke Doesn't Mean Broke. Some people think yep. that being woke and conscious means to be poor, broke, and lonely. No, you need to have some 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 income so you can have more outcome, huh? Don't Absolutely. get me preaching. You need to have more income so you can have more outcome, so you can go help some people, go feed a village and take care of some people. It, it's funny you said that that morning. Remember, we was all, was it, it was you, I, Billy, um, Nick, Nikki. You know, we were sitting in the living room when he was passing out the numbers personally, you know, to everybody. And I sat there and I was like, well, all right, I'll get it later because right now I don't, I don't need to whatever, you know, the number to the credit repair, not the credit repair, but the mortgage lady, you know, until I'm ready. And remember, Billy looked at me, he was like, man, I could bring a horse to water, but I cannot make you drink it. You are here for a reason. You're in the inner circle. Take the information. I'm like, okay, let's get it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and it, and it's now that you look forward. You know, I got a lot of stuff in the fire, a lot of things happening since we all, uh, you know, just really come together. And one of the things I want to share with the audience, and y'all get your pen, I want you to write this down. This is something that he shared with me over breakfast. And I make sure I write it down, and I say it. And he says, make sure you... Do your affirmations. I am healthy, wealthy, wise, and helping others to do the same. And I allow myself to live optimally. And uh, and I still say that today, Doc. And thank you for those words. When you focus, and I'm going to take me here and we're going to be done. Okay. Whatever you focus on expands. Yep. If you focus on what you cannot control, you become out of control. You lose control because that's your focus. If you focus on what you can control and expand that circle slowly, you get control of your life. This whole thing of misdirection 
and cognitive dissonance has you focusing on things that you cannot ever control. Yep. That is a losing battle. You're done. The average person who follows that path is dead waiting on dirt. I'm going to say it again. The average person who focuses on who focuses on what they cannot control is basically dead waiting on dirt. They're zombies. It's those who are clear and focused on their intent and living life on purpose. Even if they seem to be falling, they never fall all the way down because sometimes you're failing forward. You've got to make a lot of missteps before you figure out what steps to take. Yep. You've got to be willing, ready, and able, right? You've got to be willing, ready, and able to go through the fire because guess what makes a, guess what makes a diamond heat and pressure guess what makes a good ninja one that will always test themselves so you're going to put yourself through trial and tribulation you've got to be ready to do that if you're not ready to go through that and you want the easy route and you want everything to be just a push button app you know now people they just want an app they you know they got a whole persona they they got an app you know, this is my this is the way I want myself to look. So they push a button in the app. Yeah, yeah. So you become an appaholic. So the artificial intelligence is controlling you, and that's not really you. So now you don't know who you are. You're lost in space without the app. If they turn off the cloud, turn off the apps, you're done. So I am saying that we have a chance right now to develop the diamonds within us. But you've got to put yourself through something. And you can't keep relying on these things that just make you lazy. We can use these tools, but don't rely on these tools to the point where you just become a push button person. Because that's like, you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to go through anything. And the, the people who really are the most successful people have been through a lot. Yep. The most successful people has been through a lot. Wait till you see Roderick in six months, a year from now. He's going to put himself through hell so he can create heaven on earth. Got dang right. Well, he don't have a choice. I didn't say damn. I said damn. He's got a team of people who are working with him. He's got a team of people who are working with him. The only thing that's going to make him fail is his own self. And when if the foods and the animals and the parasites start calling and he picks up the phone and and answers, hey, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) We got you. What's up? What's up? You know what I'm saying? So Basically, I'm going to say this much. Parasites are beings that live beside you. Para means besides. Cytos or sight means life. A life that lives beside you. In order to eradicate parasites, you've got to do something that changes the frequency of your entire life. Not just take some herbs to get rid of your colon parasites. You've got to work on your heart, your liver, your kidneys, your spleen. You've got to work on how you talk, how you walk, how you move. You've got to get a whole nother ethic in life. You've got to start taking control and commanding things and stop begging for things to happen. You don't beg and do a a begging prayer. Who are you begging to? You're begging to you. You've got to say, I'm grateful for being healthy. I'm grateful for being wealthy. I'm grateful for being wise. I'm grateful for being quiet. And then we got to learn how to mind our own business. We so nosy and newsy, it's ridiculous. You, you, you're always talking and always wanting to cancel somebody's culture and all this kind of stuff. See, you're being led to do this. They tell you, oh boy, somebody did something bad. And you believe it. Oh my God, you heard what such and such did? You weren't there. You're not a witness. That's none of your business. Your business is the business of being in the isness of being here right now and living the best life you can live. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to be a little more quiet and, yeah. take, the, and take down your face, fake persona that you got online? And put yeah. up something that's real and be real and talk real talk. Because yeah. most people are fake. People come to me all the time talking about what they're going to do and what they want to do. And what they really want is energy from me. So I yep. give them bait. I'm very, you know, I'm, you know I've, I've lived a few years, so I give people some bait. And they say, oh, Dr. B, this stuff you gave me is so valuable. It's bomb. It's the bomb. Then they figure they got enough and they run off. <laughs> and I say, I didn't give you the mother load. Yep. Because to get the mother load, you got to stay with me. 
You're going to have to do something for yourself to prove to yourself who you really are. You see, so we we, we, we got to stop modeling. We have to stop living the life of parasites because parasites, after a while, take over and you become a parasite. People who have been oppressed, after a while, become oppressive. People who have been taken over by parasites or by alien beings or whatever become parasitic. We have to usher this time period out of our lives. Are you ready to do that? Yes. Elevation time. Make sure you go to Elevation Time and get on the website. I mean, the email list. Uh, my book will be out soon. We're finishing it up right now. The book is deep. The book is deep. We've got lots of herbs and things, but really check out the music and the classes. There's so much there. You could go to college. And there's a lot of free things on the classes, videos. If you join the membership, there's videos on. I've got this, this, this four part series on aliens and about who, who are the real aliens, what's going on inside of us, and how we can become our own universe. You've always been a universe. You've always been a solar system. Somebody has talked you out of who you really are. So you've ha you've, you may have identity loss, identity theft. But the minute you are ready to move towards being real, it, 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 it comes online. You can do it all. You see? So when I sat with Roderick, I gave him the keys. I said, I'm going to give you the keys, bro. Speak this way. Do this, do this thing every day. Every day, no matter what. You're going to have to convince yourself and program yourself at another level. Most of your mantras, right, are working against you. Yep. Lady told me the other day, she I said, what's your mantra, daily mantra? Well, my mantra is I don't want to get cancer and I, I don't want to have a bad relationship. I'm, well, that's your mantra? She didn't never tell me what she desired. You put in your mantra what it is you desire. I am grateful for being healthy. I'm grateful for the new home. I'm grateful for love. I'm grateful for good food. I'm grateful for wealth. You be grateful in advance. Now the entities, right, become entities. The aliens ain't going to land. The ones that come here to do evil are not going to land if you are totally illuminated. And you are standing in yourself and they can't take you unless you give yourself up. We have signed a contract and we don't even realize it. We've signed the contract with so many things. And we didn't realize we were signing a contract with the devil or the evil or the weaker part of ourselves. The devil must be outwitted. Read the book, Outwitting the Devil. It says right. in there, how do you get away from the devil within? Don't drift. Stay focused on the goal. What is your goal? In your goal, it shouldn't have how. It's none of your business. Your goal is what you desire and why. What? What is it you desire? When Roderick and I sat down, I gave him his, I helped him create his what? What is it that you desire and why? Yep. Because he's going to help a whole lot of other people. See, that why, when your why is a big thing that's going to help the world, that's huge. Isn't that about you? You want to be wealthy? Why? So I can help other people become wealthy and teach others to do the same. You see? So there is a formula for everything. And this is the time to formulate your formula and stay focused. Are you ready? Are you willing? You see, now, if, if if Dr. B sounds a little wild and a little crazy, then, you know, there's a whole lot of places that you can go to get information. I have a small piece of things, but that piece is big and it's becoming whole if you should accept this mission. The mission could seem impossible, but it's not. It's a five-year mission. Space is the final frontier, and space is not empty. Space is full of a whole lot of things that you can't perceive. Fast. Yeah. It's an enterprise. Your life is an enterprise, but you're going to have to be the Captain Kirk. 
That's the, the kirk means church. You got to be the temple, be the mosque. You don't go to the church, to the mosque. You become it. You become the temple. You become the temple. The temple, the head, your mind focused on goals. So we're helping people do this. There's a lot of classes, like I said, on the website. Go join a class. Listen to the music. And if you'd like to get the cleanse, we've got, you know, things that help, you know, men with their manhood, women with their womanhood, you know, at ElevationTime.com. And make sure that, you know, you go to my, uh, uh, join my, our, our uh, IG, Dr. B Serious, Dr. B Serious on IG and on Facebook. And, you know, with the Conscious Awards, you know, I just found out today that some folks were selecting me. I didn't even know. But, yeah, vote for Dr. B. Vote for the people that you love. Vote for Dr. B. You got you see? that, right? So, you know, I want to thank you, brother, for, for your program and what you're doing. And I'm behind you. And I'm glad that you're bringing to the light, right, the, 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 the melanated side of the story of yes. beings and sightings and things like that. That's beautiful what you're doing. I'd like to also thank Billy Carson and Elizabeth and the whole family, you know what I'm saying, for, 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 for you know, bringing me in because I was, you know, I was doing something else, yeah. you know, and also, you know, uh, 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 Brother Rich at Black Magic, you know, 363, and all the people who have been helping build the new world. We're building a new world, y'all. Let's do it together. Time. We got to do it as a village, and we got to do it in the name of true love. If you're faking up and making up, don't come. You got to be ready to get busy. This is the time to become a diamond because guess what? We're all three feet from gold. Don't let the parasites and toxoplasma play with your message. You cannot be fearful at this time. You must be courageous and you must outwit the devil, the parasites, the evils, the vampires, the pirates. And remember, you got to travel light because most of the luggage on your boat is not yours. Most of the cargo on your ship is not yours. Mm. That is, you know, that's really deep, you know, and I want to share something real quick before you go. You know, one of the things that um, people used to call me on the phone, uh, Doc, uh, and they would say, well, Roderick, what's up? And and I had this whole thing in it and they kind of, you know, they would laugh a little bit. I would say, well, I'm working hard, hardly working. Either way I'm working, either way it's hard. I used to say all of that up until January when you and I met. And now I just tell them, man, I'm having some freaking fun. That's what I do now. <laughs> it ain't about, you know, working hard, hardly working. Either way, all that, I, I, you know, I used to tell people that, you know, you, the struggling, oh, I, you know, the struggle was real. No, the preparation was real. <laughs> So a whole of that term terminology has changed. And then, you know, one of the grateful things when he's talking about outwitting the devil, you know, I remember when he sat there and he said, I'm going to give you the audible of outwitting the devil. And, you know, you sent it to me and, and, and I just appreciate it because again, yeah, we, we have a close knit family, you know, with Billy and, and Elizabeth and a lot of people think that he probably is out there with a lot of people, but he's not. And I remember even the first time me and Billy met a couple of years ago and, you know, we were just talking on the phone for hours and he was like, yeah, yeah, I don't talk to a lot of people. People think you do. But once these live streams are over, it's quiet, uh, you know, and but when that circle got smaller, it got stronger. Uh, and, and so that is one of the best things about it. And even for me doing some of the things, the TV projects now working on some of the bigger deals and, uh, Billy now is my business manager. And so, you know, the success is inevitable now, <laughs> you know, you, you get what I'm saying. And it's just a beautiful thing to, to be part of that, uh, you know, forbid knowledge family in that inner circle. And, um, and yes, that's what some of the inspiration that y'all see in project black. Uh, which is the Black League of Alien Contact Knowledge. And so when you see people like Doc B. Serious, uh, part of what we're going to be doing, him and I, I discussed it. I asked his advice on certain things, certain verbiage that we want to use, make sure I'm not alienating this all is inclusive for everyone. Um, and, and just to have it, man, in and, and, and the conversation. So I appreciate you. I appreciate our relationship, our love uh, for one another and all those things. And uh you know, you said you'll be here at least an hour. It is three hours. Y'all give this man. Yeah, I know, right? We that's how we do it though. When we you on the phone, we just talk. So yeah, we've been here three freaking hours, but it's amazing. 
it's almost you put on a whole new show. Uh, and and you know, I'm proud if y'all don't share this, I'm gonna just take this video down with just so much knowledge that he would. No, I'm kidding. This this video is not gonna go anywhere. But what I want to do, and real quickly, I just put it into the chat, my YouTube channel. We're about 70 people away from uh you know, 11,000. So there's 2,500 people in here. I know a hundred you guys who have not subscribed to why the big secret YouTube channel can hit that link. Uh, it's moving pretty fast or go to Roderick Martin's why the big secret subscribe to the channel. What's the last word you want to not last word, but what's the positive flow word you want to leave us right now? One word you. Okay. Well, give us a are in control. Okay. If you should take control. You okay. must take control now. You can't wait for anyone to save you. You must save yourself. And you're going to have to row down the river with the natural flow of the river. Row, row, row your boat, your boat gently down the stream. stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. The key is life, life is but is a, a dream. dream. Be careful you're not living your own nightmare and daymare. You must wake up now. If you're ready, let's go. Let's go. It's elevation time. Elevationtime.com. Get on the email list. And Brother Roderick, you know, if there's any time when I could help support your journey, you know, and I thank you for helping me support my journey or our journey here our this journey, with, baby. This, with this program because I like I said I actually forgot that I was gonna be on you know what I'm saying you know I'm not doing a lot of shows right now because you know I'm saving something that you know we're doing something big and we're building oh yeah so if, but if I can help what you are doing then you call me if I can give you just a few words or the language of love then I'm here for you if you don't know what to say y'all say nothing if you have nothing good to say, say nothing. But when you speak, speak real words, speak power, or be silent. Be ready, be willing, be live, and be wise. Amen. Dr. B. Serious. Much love to all of you. Travel light. You don't need that luggage. I'll see you all again soon. Let's do this again in a moment. Never mind what those aliens are doing. <laughs> There you go. You got to right. get focused on what you're doing. Yes. Much love to you. All right. Okay, y'all, you have it. You have the show of shows. Hopefully you hit the like button. You're going to share it. all of this. Uh, we extended it. Hey, why? Because it was good. Yeah, we touched on a lot of things, but you heard greatness out of this man. And when I tell you that's the inner circle that I'm in, and yes, I will take all of the information that's poured into me, the love and all of that, and then share it with you as I love you, as I told you. And I've said it before, if you are a stranger and you can hate me without knowing me, then I can love you without ever meeting you as well. And that's how we flow. That is how we're going to go things and do as we do. Uh, it's been a plum, please, and pleasure, as well as a privilege serving you tonight with Roderick's Martin, Why the Big Secret, here on Forbid Knowledge TV every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time. Uh, but again, if you have had an opportunity to subscribe to the channel, uh, definitely I appreciate you doing that. We are, let's see, officially um, 16 more people. If you subscribe to the channel, we will have our 11,000. So if it's 2,000 you left in here and you can do so, I pretty much love you to do so. Uh, real quickly, once again, Project Black. I just want to show you our new brand, our new seal. And this Project Black is an acronym for the Black League of Alien Contact Knowledge. We're going to be doing live seminars, workshops. You heard Dr. B, Billy, all of us going to support the vision of starting a conversation to where there is a taboo subject in the community. Uh, especially the African-American communities. But we're going to touch on the history and where we come from. This is why you see this brand has a lot of story. And I'm going to talk to you one day in, in Why the Big Secret. We're going to give a channel, uh, a video, actually, talking about every part of the color, why we chose the eye of Raw sitting there, 
why we chose the face, the look, everything of this brand and where we're going to be going. There is a story behind it, and it's all based upon this video that Billy Carson did nine months ago, the hidden black kings and queens of ancient uh, Egypt. Uh, with that being said, I, like I said, I just wanted to tell you uh, I love you. Uh, and let me say that we're going to get out of here. Let me just check real quick. I just want to make sure we hit it. We hit the 11,000. I just want to make sure we do if we did or didn't, uh, but we can. And we have. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we hit 11,000 on Water Big Secret because of you. And I want to thank you for doing that as always. And, and like he said, watch me transform right here before your eyes. Billy Carson's sister, Maria Carson, is doing a TV show. She is a nutritionist, world-class triathlon athlete, and I am her test subject for a full season to get not only uh, back or release the weight, like I said, but also bring in the swag, baby, and we're going to do it. Uh, and you can actually reach out to her yourself, and if you want her to personally train you, you can do that. And once again, if you want to be part of Project Black, email me at contact at whythebigsecret.com. That's the email address. Looking forward. And lastly, if you're in Dallas, Texas area, this is where we are. We're going to start doing some group uh, get togethers. Uh, send me your information. Don't just send me your email. Send me your telephone number uh, if you're in Dallas, Texas area. And that is at contact is at the at whythebigsecret.com. See, you know, contact at whythebigsecret.com. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff here in Dallas uh, and pretty much. All right. With that being said, uh, that was great, man. It was a great show. And uh, and uh, who is this saying F U F U up Dr. B lecture? I hope he's saying it in a good way. Uh, if not, we will do. Uh, all right. We are out right now. Love you all. Uh, nope. Let me make sure I play the outro. Love you. Love you.